Chapter 41 Lost in Thought, Zhu Fish suddenly asked, Is he serious? Xu Yu paused for a moment and continued shyly, You should ask Lin Ming Xu. But I think he should be serious. Zhu Fish. He regretted asking such a question in a moment of absent mindedness. This fatal blow finally broke Zhu Fish. With a creak, the door opened, and Lin Ming Xu walked in. Zhu Fish felt as if he had seen a savior, his eyes burning as he said, Lin Ming Xu. Before he could finish his sentence, a strand of fluffy hair suddenly floated past him. Xu Yu rushed past him and stood in front of Lin Ming Xu, saying, Boyfriend, you're back. The beautiful youth showed signs of affection, getting closer to Lin Ming Xu with gentle eyes and a sweet voice. Zhu Fish. Couldn't bear to watch any more. He gritted his teeth and said, Lin Ming Xu. Lin Ming Xu raised an eyebrow and calmly asked, What is it? I finally understand why you allowed Xu Yu to bully me. Lin Ming Xu? It turns out you did it for my own good. Zhu Fish trembled and shivered, goosebumps covering his body. Lin Meng Xu. For some reason, he felt a faint sense of pride? No, it must be an illusion. With calm composure, Lin Meng Xu, as if the person who deliberately lingered at the door was not him, calmly said, What do you need from me? Well, it's like this. Zhu Fish glanced at Xu Yu and quickly explained his purpose. It was nothing more than cooperation on certain matters. Lin Meng Xu nodded, All right, have them send the proposal over and I'll look at it as soon as possible. Then he casually asked, Is there anything else? Zhu Fish, yes. Damn, why did he feel so unnecessary? Is this what it feels like to be a third wheel every day? Does life have to be painful once? Zhu Fish felt aggrieved as he squeezed out a few words, There's a business banquet tonight. It wasn't just an ordinary business dinner, it was quite important, with many potential collaborators attending. Since he had nothing else to do, he had decided to go and personally deliver the invitation to Lin Ming Xu, and also check on the situation of his company. If things weren't going well, it would be an opportunity to take advantage of. Looking at it now, with Xu Yu around, he felt invincible. Zhu Fish's tone became resentful, Lin Ming Xu, you must come, and you can bring a guest. Bring a guest? Xu Yu stood up eagerly and blinked his eyes, is there good food? Yes. There's plenty. Zhu Fish emphasized, it's a five-star hotel. Top chefs. Buffet style. Eat as much as you want. Xu Yu's eyes sparkled as he looked at Lin Ming Xu, can I go? Lin Ming Xu. He glanced at Zhu Fish with a silent warning, stay away from Xu Yu. Zhu Fish immediately understood, well, no. The two men locked eyes for a few seconds, and Xu Yu, who didn't get a response from Lin Ming Xu, looked over with suspicion, are you? Zhu Fish's body jolted, and for some reason, he quickly retorted, I didn't. Xu Yu, oh. What's with the excitement? I thought you wanted to stay and have a free meal. Xu Yu sighed and said, it's okay if you want to. Zhu Fish? The youth with a profound meaning said, but you have to pay for yourself. Zhu Fish, wait, what does paying for yourself mean? He was confused. This kind of conversation, which he dared not ponder on and worried about his own well-being, was really fascinating. To avoid an early demise, Zhu Fish left the invitation and quickly left, unable to bear being alone with Xu Yu any longer. He's a fool when it comes to Xu Yu. With no one else in the office, Xu Yu reached out and picked up the invitation, taking a closer look. It was exquisitely made and had a faint fragrance. This was the kind of high-class banquet that celebrities would attend, right? Lin Mingxu didn't pay much attention to it and simply asked, Do you want to go? I'm a little curious, mainly because I've never been to this kind of banquet, Xu Yu replied frankly. Lin Mingxu had been to too many of these banquets, so he had no expectations. This one seemed grand, but in his eyes, it was just a regular event. Real cooperation depended on the size of the benefits and the level of risk, not something that could be achieved with one or two banquets. For someone like Lin Ming Xu, a seasoned businessman, the banquet was at most a finishing touch. However, seeing Xu Yu's eager expression, he slightly changed his words. If you want to go, we'll go. Okay, okay, Xu Yu happily kept the invitation. Time flew by, and it was already noon.
Lin Mingxiu closed his computer and asked Xu Yu, What do you want to eat? They would have lunch first, then buy some cups, and come back to rest a bit before continuing to work in the afternoon. The CEO's day was simple and unadorned. Xu Yu paused for a moment and said, Anything is fine. Lin Mingxiu raised an eyebrow, Shall I order takeout? That's fine too. Lin Mingxiu gave him a meaningful look, Really? Remember to use coupons, and don't order too much. Xu Yu remembered something and specifically instructed, Since there's a buffet in the evening, we need to have an empty stomach for lunch. Lin Mingxiu, sure enough. The corner of his mouth twitched, unsurprised by Xu Yu's response. The takeout arrived shortly, and after finishing their lunch, Xu Yu and Lin Mingxiu went downstairs together. Before leaving, Lin Mingxiu said to his assistant, Tangler, I'll be nearby, not going too far. Contact me if there's anything. Tangla watched them as they walked away, and as soon as their figures disappeared into the elevator, a group of colleagues who were having lunch approached. Assistant Tang, who was that person beside President Lin? Assistant Tang thought to himself that he hadn't been working for long and hadn't figured out President Lin's temperament yet. There was no way he could casually reveal such heavyweight gossip. So he cleared his throat and tactfully replied, I don't know about that. I only know that President Lin asked me this morning if there were any shops nearby selling cups. Cups? The group of people looked at each other, and a Mediterranean programmer suddenly realized something. I know. This must be. The sign of breaking cups. Tangler? Time flew by, and it was soon evening. In the afternoon, Xu Yu carefully selected two beautiful cups in the store, and when he returned home, he meticulously chose what to wear for tonight. It wasn't intentional, but the original owner had way too many clothes. He had been trying to sell them for a long time, but he hadn't sold many. After all, these so-called designer clothes didn't hold their value, and if given the choice, she would rather have an equivalent amount of gold. If all else failed, he would just wear them himself. Xu Yu changed into one outfit, then another, but still couldn't decide which one to wear. Just as he was hesitating about the top to wear with the pants he had already chosen, Lin Mingxu entered from outside. Seeing Lin Mingxu, Xu Yu felt like he had found the last straw and quickly asked, Lin Mingxu, which one looks better on me, this one or this one? He had already made up his mind about the pants, but now he was undecided about the top. The one on the left was a pure white shirt with delicate lace edges, cleverly designed to highlight a slender waist and long legs, giving off an upright and elegant vibe like a young green tree. The one on the right had a dark base with embroidered patterns on the collar, and its cut was fitted and accentuated a person's slim and tall figure, but it exuded a more steady and less attention-grabbing aura. Lin Mingxu's eyes slightly darkened as he walked up to Xu Yu and suddenly spoke, Let me see you wearing them. Okay. Xu Yu didn't think much of it and quickly changed into the two outfits, showcasing them one by one. He turned left and right, then spun in place, striking a Tai Chi pose, but Lin Mingxu's brow twitched, interrupting his movements. The dark one is more suitable for this occasion. Xu Yu acknowledged with a no and quickly put the other outfit back. When he came out again, Lin Mingxu had also changed into his clothes, a dark suit. Come to think of it, he seemed to have very few light-colored clothes. Whether it was accidental or coincidental, Lin Mingxu chose a dark blue tie that happened to resemble the color of the pattern on Xu Yu's shirt. When Xu Yu saw this outfit, his eyes lit up, and he approached eagerly, Boyfriend, you. Lin Mingxu's body stiffened for a moment, and he casually retorted, What? You have a hair on your shoulder. Lin Mingxu, oh. Xu Yu, with a triumphant expression, pinched the hair in his hand. See, my eyesight is good. Lin Mingxu had nothing to say. The two of them dressed neatly and soon arrived at the venue of the banquet. It was a top-floor banquet hall in a five-star hotel, and as they entered, they were greeted by a vibrant atmosphere, making it feel like a sunny day in May despite being in November. The guests who came here were all dressed elegantly, and among them, Xu Yu blended in, unrecognized. Just as Lin Mingxu was about to say something, he saw Xu Yu standing by the buffet table. He picked up a piece of cake. Then a serving of sausage. Followed by a piece of seafood. In just a few seconds, his plate was full, piled high. 
Lin Meng Xu. He suspected that Xu was here to enjoy the food and drink for free, and he had quite a bit of evidence to support that. Unaware that Lin Meng Xu had already discovered his purpose for attending the banquet, Xu didn't pay attention and continued to search for delicious food. He went through several tables, tasting everything. As he was eating, he suddenly felt that a figure in front of him looked familiar. Like he had seen it somewhere, not just once. He took a closer look, it was Zhu Fish, so there was no problem. He continued eating. His plate filled up again, and this time, Xu decided to find a corner sofa to sit down and savor the food slowly. With his plate in hand, he turned around and almost collided with a dark figure. Xu quickly protected his plate, agilely sidestepped, and swiftly avoided the collision. Fortunately, the topmost piece of steak on his plate remained undisturbed, safe and sound. Xu couldn't help but turn his head, only to see Zhu Fish patting his temple and smiling. Xu, you're here. He looked around and asked, Where's Lin Ming Xu? I need to find him for something. Xu's cheeks puffed up, focused on his meal, and he couldn't recall where Lin Ming Xu had been just a moment ago. So, relying on a vague impression, he pointed in a direction and said, He might be over there. Zhu Fish nodded, hastened his steps, and headed in that direction. Before long, another person stood in front of Xu Yu. Hello, are you Xu Yu? Hmm? Someone here actually knew him? Xu Yu looked up and scanned the person, it was a young girl he didn't recognize. The young girl smiled and reached out her hand, saying, I knew it was you. Hello, Xu Yu. I'm your fan. I often go to the guest residence to watch your performances. Xu Yu was instantly delighted, great, he actually had a wealthy fan. This was the beginning of the peak of his life. For a moment, Xu Yu put aside his meal and quickly took photos with the fan, offering a complete package of autographs and services. The fan kindly asked him, Xu Yu, are you here to meet someone? I know most of the people here, I can help you. No, no, Xu Yu hurriedly explained. I'm different from them. Different? The fan asked. Xu Yu straightened his chest. I'm here for personal growth. I mainly came here to replenish my energy. The fan. After the fan left, Zhu Fish angrily walked back, gritting his teeth as he asked, That way is the exit. I almost went straight home. A. Xu Yu felt guilty for a split second and then pointed in another direction. Maybe it's over there? Zhu Fish was so furious he gritted his teeth. Are you sure? Xu Yu innocently looked at him. Not sure. Before Zhu Fish could erupt in anger, Xu Yu quickly defended himself, Lin Ming Xu is a grown man. He can find his own way. It's not like I installed a navigation system on him, right? Zhu Fish coldly snorted. Fine, I'll trust you again. He stormed off towards the new direction Xu Yu indicated. Xu Yu quickly moved to another spot, holding his plate, to avoid the boss holding a grudge against him. However, as he took a few steps, he suddenly saw Lin Ming Xu up ahead. Lin. Xu Yu was about to call out to him and tell him that Zhu Fish was looking for him, but in the blink of an eye, Lin Ming Xu slightly turned his body, revealing another person in front of him. It was a young man. He was holding a glass of champagne, stumbling slightly, with a peculiar look in his eyes. In the next second, the champagne in his hand spilled onto Lin Ming Xu's suit, as if it were the most natural thing to happen. Ah, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. The young man apologized repeatedly, his face full of guilt. Then, he shyly reached out his hand. Sir, shall I help you? No need. Lin Ming Xu coldly interrupted him, lifted his gaze, and accurately found Xu Yu among the group of people focused on chatting and expanding their network. Xu Yu met his gaze and couldn't help but wink in response. A hint of a smile flashed in Lin Ming Xu's eyes as he waved at him. Xu Yu immediately quickened his pace, walking up to him and lowering his voice. He said to Lin Meng Xu, Tell me, how should I cooperate with you? Lin Meng Xu? Xu Yu thought he didn't understand, so he blinked again, and again, and again. His eyelids were almost twitching. He coughed lightly, hinting to Lin Meng Xu, Do you want me to act cute? Or play the arrogant young master? Should I be Sundari or a naive sweetheart? If you want a fragile... Little flower, that's also possible, but it's a bit challenging and not easy to pull off. Lin Mingxu's heart skipped a beat, 
and he suddenly blurted out, Can you try being coquettish? Shu Yu? Chapter 42 Pretending to be spoiled. It's not that I can't do it. However. Shu Yu's eye twitched, staring at Lin Ming Xu. Are you deliberately making things difficult for me with your thick eyebrows and big eyes? Were there any options for being spoiled in the choices he gave? Clearly, there weren't. However, the person opposite had already noticed. When the classic plot didn't work and the young man was nervously thinking about how to adapt, he watched helplessly as someone appeared beside the person he was infatuated with. Exquisite features, a slender figure, and skin even better than his own. He felt frustrated. Were all the good men already taken? He was quite unwilling, but after carefully examining Shiyu from top to bottom, left and right, he couldn't find any major flaws. So he mustered up the last bit of luck and said, Sir, who is this? Lin Ming Xu didn't even look at him, his gaze fixed on Shu Yu. Shu Yu, ahem. He gathered his courage and took a step forward. First, the left leg, left foot, then the right leg, right foot, and then. He moved to the other side of Lin Ming Xu. He reached out and grabbed the man's arm, and with a coquettish tone that even surprised himself, he spoke. Honey Tilda. Suddenly, Lin Ming Xu felt his scalp tingling. Obviously, he made a wrong decision. The young man's head was already leaning towards him, rubbing against his upper arm, then rubbing again. In a spoiled voice, he said, Who is this? Lin Ming Xu. The person opposite turned pale. The young man had never seen such a situation before and stuttered as he asked Lin Ming Xu, Do, do you really like this? Lin Ming Xu, is it still useful to pretend not to know Xu now? The young man seemed to have regained his confidence and straightened his chest, saying stubbornly, I, I can also be compared to this kind of person. Yes, yes. Xu held onto Lin Ming Xu's arm even tighter, almost leaning against him completely. But too bad, my husband only likes me like this. In an instant, he turned domineering. Your chest isn't flat enough, your butt isn't perky enough. You can't act spoiled in a dolphin-like voice. What gives you the right? Your waist isn't slim enough, your kidneys aren't weak enough, you don't suffer from insomnia and have excessive dreams at night. What gives you the right? The young man looked horrified. You. That's right. Shu Yu, in a weak state, leaned against Lin Ming Xu's chest, covering his face shyly. Didn't expect that, did you? I'm the dominant one. The young man? Do you even believe what you're saying? He stumbled back, his face turning pale. I don't believe you're the dominant one. It doesn't matter if you believe it or not. Xu Yu didn't care about his thoughts. In the end, it's only me. Only me. Xu Yu raised his head slightly, looking into Lin Ming Xu's eyes, his smile radiant, and a small whirlpool appeared on his cheek. I'm the treasure in my husband's heart. Treasure in his heart. The person opposite trembled twice, looking at Lin Ming Xu with a complicated gaze. I, I wish you both a lifetime of happiness. You're welcome. Xu Yu continued to maintain his smile and waved goodbye to the other person. Don't come again next time. When the person disappeared into the crowd, he turned his head to Lin Ming Xu and said, Boyfriend, he's gone now. We succeeded. Lin Ming Xu's expression was subtly complicated as he looked at him. Gone? Yes. Xu Yu stood up straight, timidly speaking, I did a good job, right? At this moment, he saw the good result and began to act obediently. Lin Ming Xu's mood was mixed. Being spoiled was his choice, but it was Xu Yu who carried it out. After careful consideration, he couldn't help but say, Are you really the dominant one? Cough, cough. Xu Yu, at this moment, behaved meekly. This is an emergency strategy to make the enemy retreat quickly, it doesn't represent the true meaning. Dolphin voice? Xu Yu lowered himself, speaking softly. That's a temporary tactical move to achieve strategic goals quickly, not entirely reliable. Then. Lin Ming Xu's eyes darkened, and with a deeper meaning, he asked, calling me husband as well? Yes, yes. Xu Yu remained unrepentant, sticking to his story. Calling you that way is more intimate. Don't you think the effect is good? The effect was quite good. Surprisingly good. At this moment, 
the young man's ever-changing demeanor had completely disappeared. Even the angle at which he lowered his head had a touch of meekness. The back of his neck was slightly exposed, with a beautiful curve, and it was pure white. Recalling the warmth from before, Lin Mingxu's Adam's apple moved slightly, and he calmly said, Call me once more. I want to hear it. The previous few lines weren't accurate. In fact, they weren't just inaccurate, they were absolutely absurd. Xu Yu, are? But haven't all the people left? I see, Lin Mingxu is planning a backup plan. After all, he is the main character in the relationship, such an outstanding man easily attracts attention at the banquet. So, Xu Yu pondered for a moment and spoke again, honey. Lin Mingxu's heart trembled, but his expression remained unchanged as he said, that's not right, the ending tone shouldn't be so high. Honey? Don't stress the accent, make it lighter. Honey? The ending tone of the young man's voice still had a slight rise, but it had a different playful tone. He contemplated the extremely intimate address repeatedly, pronouncing it with a gentle and melodious tone, like a soft spring breeze. Then the gentle breeze turned into a gust, and then into a strong wind. The wind blew and blew, blowing directly into the depths of their hearts, making everything rustle and stir without stopping. Honey, 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 honey. Suddenly, Lin Mingxu paused, his pupil slightly unfocused, as if his attention was not fully concentrated. Honey? He didn't speak or respond, and Sha Yu also stopped, tilting his head. What's wrong? What else wasn't satisfactory? He had said it so many times that his mouth had gone dry. I say. Zhu Fish suddenly appeared behind them silently and spoke in a calm voice. Have you two gone too far? Xu Yu. Lin Meng Xu. Zhu Fish was exasperated. Did you deliberately keep me away just to play these games here? Searching the entire venue, only to turn around and find Xu Yu and Lin Meng Xu being sweet together. Who could understand this feeling? Who understood his frustration? Xu Yu's face turned red all of a sudden. He didn't know why, but when he was being shameless in front of Lin Mingxu just now, he didn't feel this embarrassed. But now that Zhu Fish had caught them, he felt a little awkward. He stammered, Why are you eavesdropping on other people's conversations? Zhu Fish gritted his teeth. Oh, I'm sorry. It's just that my ears are too sensitive in public places like this. That's right. Xu Yu raised his thumb to praise him. You can hear everything with so many people around, just like a dog. Zhu Fish ground his teeth. Say it again? For a moment, he wondered if signing Xu Yu was the biggest mistake of his life. Um. Xu Yu blinked his eyes. Can't compare to a dog? Zhu Fish. Forget it. He needed to consider how much the breach of contract penalty should be. However, Xu Yu was still contemplating that sentence, and suddenly another line popped up. That's right, you can't be compared to a dog either. Zhu Fish. He was on the verge of a breakdown. I beg you, please stop mentioning dogs. Dogs are humans' best friends. He really likes dogs. He has a Doberman. How can he face his own little cutie when he goes home tonight? As a dog dad, Zhu Fish forcefully dragged Lin Mingxu away. Xu Yu, don't come over. I have something to discuss with your boyfriend. Xu Yu cough, he's just a boyfriend. The memories of calling him husband dozens of times have been thrown into the deepest part of his mind and locked away. As the people left, the banquet continued. Chi Yu held a plate and searched for a corner, finally finding a small balcony where he could relax and eat in peace. Satisfied with his meal, he couldn't help but raise a contented smile. Even his little tiger teeth were showing, and his floppy hair on top of his head shook in rhythm exuding extra delight. Not far away, Lin Mingxu finished his conversation with Zhu Fish and naturally caught sight of this scene in his peripheral vision. The sweet cooing calling him husband still echoed in his ears, as if lingering in his mind. Immediately followed by that smile. At this moment, Zhu Fish hummed and said sourly, Lin Mingxu, you mustn't forget our grand plan. A subtle change flickered across Lin Mingxu's face. He raised his hand and took a sip from his champagne glass, as if trying to hide something. Then his expression turned cold. He glanced lightly at Zhu Fish and said, Rest assured, even if I forget, you won't forget the profits you relinquished. Zhu Fish? 
You two truly live up to being a couple. Both of you are the same. But in the next second, he suddenly smirked, Hey, Lin Mingxu, is that person trying to hit on Chu Yu? Lin Mingxu furrowed his brows slightly, following the direction from earlier, and indeed, there was another man standing in front of Xu Yu. The man looked refined and presentable, with a somewhat ambiguous smile on his face. It was clear what his intentions were. However, not even a minute later, the man became frustrated and turned around to leave, walking away even faster than he came. Zhu Fish couldn't help but touch his chin, why did he leave so quickly? This person really has poor endurance. He could sustain a conversation with Xu Yu for a few sentences. As a mischievous person, he really wanted to see Lin Ming Xu's black face when someone pursued Xu Yu. It must be quite a sight. Unfortunately, he didn't get to witness it. Zhu Fish turned his head and wanted to mock a few words, Hey, Lin Ming Xu, where is your? Lin Ming Xu had already walked over to Xu Yu. Xu Yu was full from eating and didn't feel like moving much. He lazily leaned against the back of the sofa, wondering how much longer he had to wait. As he raised his eyes, Lin Ming Xu approached. He immediately put on a big smile and said, Boyfriend, are you done with your work? Lin Ming Xu nodded and swept his gaze over Xu Yu's face and upper body, but he didn't notice anything unusual. He said, I'm done with my work. Can we go home then? Xu Yu thought to himself, Perfect, I've eaten so much, I should hurry home and take a nap. Otherwise, if I go home late, I won't feel sleepy anymore. Lin Ming Xu nodded again and walked alongside him towards the exit. Xu Yu was in a great mood because he had eaten and drunk to his heart's content. He hummed a song lightly, and the tuft of hair on top of his head swayed back and forth, left and right, quite eye-catching. With each sway and movement, his presence was particularly striking. The noisy and bustling interior gradually faded away as they walked into the spacious lobby. They handed the car keys to the doorman, and Xu Yu stood in place, discreetly hiccuping. Hiccup. At that moment, Lin Ming Xu said, Xu Yu. Huh? Xu Yu hurriedly covered his mouth, his eyes darting around. Is it not allowed to hiccup here? Lin Ming Xu's mouth twitched. Hiccuping is allowed. Oh, good then. Unable to resist, Xu Yu hiccuped again, hiccup. Lin Ming Xu's temples throbbed slightly. He suppressed his emotions and calmly said, Xu Yu. You just. Hiccup. Xu Yu let out a third hiccup. Followed by another one. And another one. Hiccup. 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 Xu Yu crossed his hands over his mouth, panicked and at a loss. What should I do, Lin Ming Xu? I can't stop. Lin Ming Xu. In the middle of the night, Lin Ming Xu hurriedly drove out of the hotel. If someone didn't know better, they would think it was some earth shattering emergency. Hiccup. Sitting in the passenger seat, Xu Yu was still hiccuping. His face had turned red, feeling very uncomfortable. He checked his phone while pitifully covering his mouth, leaving only his eyes exposed as he stared at Lin Ming Xu. Lin Ming Xu, I'll try holding my breath, hiccup. Lin Ming Xu, I read online that drinking water helps, hiccup. Lin Ming Xu, hiccup. Lin Ming Xu. Zap. The car stopped by the roadside, and Lin Ming Xu opened the door and got out, leaving Xu Yu with just his back. Xu Yu, huh? Why did Lin Ming Xu leave? He was about to ask when another hiccup escaped him. Tears welled up in his eyes. Fortunately, Lin Ming Xu quickly returned holding a bottle of mineral water in his hand. Xu Yu quickly gulped down a few mouthfuls, forcefully trying to suppress the hiccups. The car's lights turned on, illuminating the interior. With teary eyes, Xu Yu looked at Lin Ming Xu and asked, Is it better now? Hiccup. No, it wasn't. Xu Yu sighed and said dispiritedly, Lin Ming Xu, forget it. Dot I'll stop hiccuping after a while. Suddenly, he remembered something and hastily changed the subject, were you going to ask me something just now? Lin Ming Xu paused for a moment, it's nothing important. Oh. Xu Yu raised his hand and rubbed his chest while looking at the content on his phone. The first suggestion didn't work, pass. The second suggestion of drinking water didn't work either, pass. The third, fourth, fifth suggestions. 
As Xu scrolled through his phone, it moved in sync with his hiccuping. Before he could reach the third suggestion, Lin Mingxu leaned in suddenly, forcing him to press his back tightly against the seat, like a small animal cornered and at a loss. Xu Yu was startled. Lin, Lin Mingxu? His handsome face appeared larger, his breath almost within reach. The man's dark eyes stared at him intently, reflecting a tiny version of himself. Xu Yu blinked reflexively, staring back in confusion. In his eyes, he could see another Lin Mingxu. The surroundings became extremely quiet. Xu Yu. Lin Mingxu's voice was very gentle. Your seat belt isn't fastened. Hiccup. As soon as he finished speaking, Xu Yu, in a state of extreme nervousness, suddenly lifted himself up forcefully. Slap. A saliva mark appeared on Lin Mingxu's cheek. Chapter 43. Like a dragonfly touching the water. Xu Yu widened his eyes, shocked to the point that his fur stood on end. Lin 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 Lin. It wasn't intentional. With saliva marks on his face, Lin Mingxu remained expressionless and said, Are you still hiccuping now? Huh? Xu Yu carefully checked and realized that he wasn't hiccuping anymore. So. Provoking Lin Mingxu was scarier than hiccuping. Once Xu Yu understood this, he sincerely respected Lin Mingxu. The car started again and drove back home. Xu Yu felt guilty and awkwardly said, Lin Mingxu, should I help you wipe it off? Even though the car's air conditioning was on. It's almost dry. But there were still some marks left. Lin Mingxu didn't say anything, just lightly glanced at him. That glance was more powerful than words, making Xu Yu even more nervous. Boyfriend, you. His gaze wandered, lingering on Lin Mingxu's cheeks and lips. Not knowing if his gaze was too intense, Lin Mingxu furrowed his brows slightly and looked at him. Is there something on my face? No, nothing. Xu Yu startled and blurted out, just a tooth mark. Lin Mingxu. No wonder it was a bit sore earlier. Since he was driving, Lin Mingxu didn't examine it closely. But Xia Yu felt guilty and couldn't help adding, actually, you can't see it if you don't look closely. Lin Mingxu raised an eyebrow, the lights weren't on. Huh? Xu looked confused. If what you said is true, even if you look closely now, you shouldn't be able to see it. Xu Yu, let me think for a moment. He pondered for a moment and suddenly realized, oh, so that's what you mean. Xu Yu quickly changed his statement, that means you can't see it no matter how you look. Lin Mingxu remained silent, then how did you see it? I. Xu Yu was about to say that he bumped his tooth earlier, but for some reason, he stopped himself and awkwardly squeezed out, a feeling. Lin Mingxu's expression was subtle, feelings can be wrong. Not possible. Xu Yu insisted, my feelings are very accurate. There was a time when I went out to buy groceries, he began telling a story, I had a feeling that something was off at home, and I felt anxious as if something important was being lost, and it made me very uncomfortable. Oh? Lin Mingxu didn't confirm or deny it, what happened next? Later, when I returned home, I found out that indeed a lamp in the house was left on for several hours. That must have wasted a lot of electricity. Lin Mingxu, well, that's very much like you. Xu Yu. The car was already parked in the residential area's parking space. The two of them got out of the car and returned home. Lin Mingxu finally got to see his own face. As he expected, it wasn't serious. It would disappear completely after a good night's sleep. But as soon as he stepped out of the bathroom, Xu Yu rushed over in a hurry, let me see, let me see. The young man had a very concerned expression. His eyebrows lightly furrowed, looking worried as if Lin Mingxu had not just received a tooth mark on his cheek but had suffered some major injury. Lin Mingxu paused for a moment and couldn't help but ask, You seem very concerned about my face. Yeah. Xu Yu thought to himself, Lin Mingxu's face is so handsome. What if he ends up with some scars that make the protagonist dislike him? Moreover, throughout history, there has never been a male protagonist with a tooth mark on his face. But Lin Mingxu remembered some of Xu Yu's previous words. His eyes darkened slightly, and then he walked over and sat on the edge of the bed, saying, Take a look. Xu Yu immediately bent down and leaned in to examine carefully. As he looked, 
he forgot about the tooth mark, and his mind was filled with one thought, Lin Mengxi was really good looking. Not only is he elegant, despite appearing a bit aloof, there's an indescribable nobility about him, a sign that he comes from a privileged background. Chu Yu had always envied people like him, they have everything, lacking nothing. They are the heaven's favored ones, born with exceptional qualities. They are shining existences. As he kept looking, he absent-mindedly drifted away, not even noticing the change in Lin Mingxu's gaze. Lin Mingxu's eyes grew deeper. From Lin Mingxu's perspective, with the handsome youth so close, with his delicate, fluttering eyelashes just within reach, it felt as if he could reach out and embrace him, firmly capturing him. This is Xu Yu. As soon as these four words appeared, they flickered and vanished. In their place, a new line emerged. It's different now. Lin Mingxu isn't made of wood or cold stone, he can naturally perceive those subtle changes. Like the incident just now, if it were the old Xu Yu, he would have only felt disgusted. But now. Lin Mingxu took a deep breath. Xu Yu. Xu Yu reflexively responded, Wait, I haven't finished looking. Lin Mingxu. He narrowed his eyes and suddenly asked, Do you really like my face? It's, it's not bad. Xu Yu shyly replied, After all, I love everything about you. And the face is definitely one of your major advantages. Lin Mingxu furrowed his brow. He felt like something was off with that response. But Xu Yu had said similar things so many times that he had grown accustomed to them, turning a deaf ear. Lin Mingxu suppressed the complex emotions in his heart. Some things had emerged like sprouting bamboo shoots, poking their heads out and demanding his attention. Reluctantly, Xu Yu stood up, no longer looking at Lin Mingxu's face. He absent-mindedly turned to wash up, and while brushing his teeth, he contemplated one thing, ah, from now on, I won't be able to see Lin Mingxu's handsome face anymore. Will I regret it? But compared to freedom and life, a handsome face is definitely of secondary importance. Xu Yu's life goal remains the same, to earn enough money and live a laid-back life, being a homebody. That has never changed. After finishing his bedtime routine and lying down on the bed, before he could say anything, Lin Mingxu calmly said, Good night. Xu Yu replied, Um hum, good night. In the blink of an eye, more than half a month had passed. Xu Yu now had stable performances two to three times a week, and his bank account was filling up abundantly. With more money, a sense of security emerged. Xu Yu even dared to treat himself to seasonal new drinks on his way home. On Friday evening, he happily carried two cups of milk tea home, only to find that there was no one there. Hadn't Lin Mingxu come back yet? Since the company got back on track, Lin Mingxu had become busier and busier. Sometimes, Xu Yu wouldn't see him all day long, Lin Mingxu would have already left in the morning, and by the time he returned in the evening, Lin Mingxu still hadn't come back. Although Lin Mingxu had the ability and talent, it took a lot of effort to go from the peak to the valley and climb back up. Xu Yu understood this very well. He sat alone on the sofa, biting the straw, hesitating whether to send a message to Lin Mingxu to express his concern. Mainly to ask if he had eaten dinner, and also because Xu Yu himself was a little hungry. His phone was still in his hand when it suddenly buzzed. Xu Yu looked down and saw that it was Wu Yush. Wu Yush had been busy lately too. As Xu Yu's manager, Wu Yush couldn't afford to fall behind as Xu Yu's career was thriving. He not only helped him make connections and find resources, but his phone was also constantly buzzing with calls. Xu Yu pressed the answer button and unsurprisingly heard the excited voice from the other side, Xu Yu. Brother Wu. Xu Yu. Brother Wu. Xu. Wu Yush suddenly snapped back to reality, cautiously saying, Your boyfriend isn't home, right? No, he hasn't come home yet. Xu Yu took a sip of milk tea, rinsed his mouth, and the straw made a sound between his teeth. He's busy with work, probably has some social engagements. Social engagements? Wu Yush immediately imagined a magnificent image of someone busy and dedicated to their career, just like he used to be. At the same time, he couldn't help but ask, Xu Yu, how long has it been like this for him? It's been a while. Xu Yu carefully recalled and realized that they hadn't had a meal together for four or five days. If it were any other couple, 
They might have overthought the situation, but she was easygoing and didn't think in that direction at all. A few thoughts crossed Wu Yuxi's mind, but he only managed to say one thing, Xu Yu, you've been working hard. Xu Yu didn't hesitate and replied, Yeah, I can only sleep for ten hours a day now, and I don't dare to cook too much food, afraid of wasting ingredients by eating alone. Wu Yush thought to himself, that doesn't sound right. But the important thing was the main matter, so he quickly said to Xu Yu, I've arranged a variety show appearance for you. Another variety show? Xu Yu remembered the last variety show, which not only brought him a service fee but also a comfortable Simmons mattress. It was so comfortable lying on it. He became interested and said, Did the director also like my face this time? No. Wu Yush suspiciously paused for a second, he liked your variety show talent. He tried to be funny. That's fine too. Xu Yu thought to himself, Isn't that my talent? The feeling of being recognized was good. It's also a business trip this time. Wu Yush continued when he saw Xu Yu's agreement, we're going to a seaside city for a week. To the seaside. As soon as Xu Yu heard that word, he immediately nodded and said, I'm going. An hour later, Lin Ming Xu returned home and found that the kitchen door was open, and the aroma wafted through the air. He suddenly realized that he had been busy with work, working overtime until now and hadn't had dinner yet. Lin Ming Xu took off his coat and unconsciously walked into the kitchen. Xu Yu noticed something and turned his head, smiling at him, You're back? Hmm. Lin Ming Xu said calmly, Haven't you had dinner? I already ate. Xu Yu, seeing that it was Lin Ming Xu, refocused his attention on the pot and answered while stirring, Isn't this just a late night snack for you? He pointed to the table outside and said, There's bubble tea there a new flavor for autumn and winter this year. Give it a try. Lin Mingxu didn't like sweet things and had never tried bubble tea. The refusal was on the tip of his tongue, but he didn't say it. However, his hand moved involuntarily and picked up the bubble tea. Then he paused and asked, Is the bubble tea shop running a promotion? Huh? Xu was surprised and turned his head, How did you know? Lin Mingxu. Xu Yu realized it and smiled awkwardly, Ah, uh, even if they're running a promotion, it's because they thought of you, right? He skillfully said, Otherwise, am I the kind of person who wastes food and insists on drinking two cups of bubble tea alone? Lin Ming Xu's mouth twitched, You could be. Xu Yu. Uh oh, it's not easy to fool Lin Ming Xu now. He nervously continued to argue, Even if that's the case, I still gave you the bubble tea, right? The warm atmosphere from when he entered the house was completely gone. Lin Mingxu put down the bubble tea with mixed feelings. Xu Yu noticed and felt even more guilty. He cleared his throat and quickly brought the late night snack, saying, How about trying this? Lin Mingxu had only casually eaten something around noon, so he was really hungry now. Xu Yu made beef soup. The aroma filled the air, and the warm soup flowed down his throat, instantly soothing his body and mind. After finishing the late night snack, Lin Mingxu still picked up the bubble tea. When Xu Yu finished washing the dishes and came out of the kitchen, he saw an empty plastic cup in the trash can. He couldn't help but chuckle and wondered which bubble tea shop was having a buy one get one free promotion lately. Then he hummed a song and went to take a shower. After showering, Xu Yu lay on the big bed, stretched, and kicked his legs. Lin Mingxu came in, and Xu Yu casually said, Lin Mengxu, I'll be going on another business trip the day after tomorrow. Where are you going? Well, Xu Yu recalled, to Binhai City. He emphasized, this time it will be for a whole week. Lin Mengxu eagerly looked at him and asked, Will you miss me? Last time, I only went for a day and a night, and it seemed like you didn't miss me that much. Lin Mengxu recalled the events and consequences of the last day and night, and any trace of emotions quickly disappeared. He dryly replied, Oh. Oh? Xu Yu's gaze instantly changed, What do you mean by oh, Lin Meng Xu? I'll be gone for a whole seven days this time. A whole week. God took seven days to create the world. Lin Meng Xu said expressionlessly, Peng Wu used one strike to open the heavens. It means that the Western gods aren't good enough. Xu Yu? Chapter 44 
One day, Lin Mingxu unexpectedly caught on to his joke, and even retaliated. Xu Yu was taken aback for a moment and suddenly blurted out, Lin Mingxu, you've become my shape. He covered his face with his hand and shyly said, you love me so much. Lin Mingxu. Here it comes, that familiar pain in his forehead. He gritted his teeth and said, with clenched fists, Xu Yu, is your Chinese teacher still alive? Um. Xu Yu pondered seriously and replied, I think so. Then what about your physical education teacher? Seems like they're still around. Lin Mingxu, well, that's a miracle. At this moment, Xu Yu quickly realized and hummed, it took Nu Wu more than a day to create humans. Before Lin Mingxu could speak, he continued at lightning speed, Dai Wu took several years to control the floods, and Bai Suzhen had to wait until the destined person was 1,800 years old. 1,800 years, not 1,800 days. He emphasized dramatically, so, you see, time does have significance. I understand. Lin Mingxu looked deeply into his eyes and asked, but you only asked if I wanted you. Would you miss me? Of course. Xu Yu solemnly declared, I will miss you every day, especially miss you, and only miss you. He looked at Lin Mingxu affectionately and said, after all, you are my boyfriend. Who else could I think of if not you? The young man's tone was sincere, and his eyes were clear and bright, as if every word came from the bottom of his heart. However, in Lin Mingxu's eyes, the man's gaze grew darker and more distant as he said softly, All right, I'll remember your words. Xu Yu? Why does Lin Mingxu seem strange? But upon careful thought, he couldn't figure it out. On Monday morning, Lin Mingxu accompanied Xu Yu to the airport. Wu Yush was already waiting there early in the morning. When he saw the two approaching, he immediately perked up and said, Shu Yu. Brother Wu. Shu Yu. Wu. Lin Mingxu's expressionless face interrupted, Should I go first? Cough. Shu Yu quickly stopped and teased, Brother Wu, you don't have to come to see me off. Besides, aren't you going tomorrow too? I guess I can do that. Wu Yu shrugged his face and sighed, But if I don't give you a few words of advice, I won't feel at ease. Xu Yu was puzzled, do I look unreliable? No. Wu Yush sincerely said, you look reliable, but as soon as you open your mouth, you become unreliable. Xu Yu. Out of the corner of his eye, Xu Yu accidentally caught a glimpse of a hint of amusement in Lin Mingxu's eyes. What's going on? It must be an illusion. Otherwise, what could be so funny that even Lin Mingxu finds it amusing? Xu Yu resolutely pushed that image out of his mind. At this moment, Wu Yu offered to help him with the ticket. Xu Yu handed him his documents, then cleared his throat and said, Boyfriend. He blinked desperately, his eyes shining like a puppy, eagerly anticipating, Do you have anything to say to me? Lin Ming Xu raised an eyebrow, Stay safe? Xu Yu nodded eagerly, MHM, MHM, MHM. Have a smooth journey? Xu Yu nodded again, MHM, MHM, MHM. Lin Mingxu gazed at him, his tone calm, come home early. Xu Yu felt happy, spun in place, made a heart gesture, and said, Boyfriend, you'll be at home. For some reason, even Lin Mingxu's breathing slowed down at that moment, as if he was also anticipating something. Sure enough, Xu Yu's eyes and eyebrows curved, and his smile was radiant as he said, Take care of yourself. Lin Mingxu responded with a soft, he watched as Xu Yu took the ticket and walked briskly toward the security checkpoint. Until his figure completely disappeared. Xu Yu arrived in Binhai City in the afternoon. This filming actually takes three days, but there are some recordings that require a change of location to the neighboring city in the middle. So, in reality, the first three days are in Binhai, and the following four days are in the neighboring Luohai. After Xu Yu arrived at the hotel, the production team informed him that not everyone had arrived yet, and he could do whatever he wanted in the hotel for now, hotel expenses would be reimbursed by the production team. Xu Yu, why didn't you mention this good thing earlier? He was like a happy butterfly, freely roaming around the hotel. Trying out the new dishes in the restaurant for a while, then enjoying a full body massage at the spa. Ah, the lavender of Provence. Ah, the mighty Mahi Mahi swimming upstream. 
Shiyu casually asked the massage therapist for two slices of cucumber, and without changing his clothes, he lay directly on a poolside lounge chair, placing the cucumber slices on his eyelids. After a while, footsteps approached, and someone sat down on the lounge chair beside him, sighing, sigh, what should I do? Shiyu was half asleep and made a humming sound, indicating that he didn't understand. However, the person misunderstood and continued, I like her so much, why doesn't she like me? Shiyu made another humming sound, indicating that he still didn't understand. The person sighed again, they say girls like flowers, so I had the butler rare ship tulips from the Netherlands for her, but she didn't want them. She said she's allergic to pollen. They say girls like handbags, so I asked my cousin to buy the latest Hermes bag for her, but she didn't want it. She said she can only fit everything in her backpack. They say. He rambled on and on, going back and forth, incessantly, never ending. It was clear that this was a young person struggling in the quagmire of love. Chu Yu's drowsiness had completely dissipated, and he decided to show mercy and lend a helping hand to the young woman. In a solemn tone, he said with deep meaning, Have you ever considered that you can't just rely on persistence when pursuing someone? Moreover, when it comes to gift giving, you should consider it from the other person's perspective. If you do it for a long time. The young person, will I be successful? No, Shi Yu shook his head. You will lose yourself. The young person? It sounded reasonable, but upon careful thought, something felt off. Shi Yu continued, Next time you see her, you can ask her one question. Ask her if she's willing to let you be her son. This. The young person ignited hope, will she agree? No, Shi Yu shook his head again. Because that way, you will be kilometers away from her. The young person? He came to confide in a friend, and now he feels his head buzzing. Speaking of this, Shi Yu suddenly remembered Lin Ming Xu, after all, he promised to think of him, at least make a symbolic gesture. So Shi Yu lifted the cucumber slice from his right eye, skillfully took a selfie, added the above filter and sent it over. Shu Yu, on the first day of my business trip, missing you so much, image. The young man next to him finally got a clear look at his face and was stunned. Wait, who are you? Shu Yu pursed his lips. No need to thank me, I'm just a passing good Samaritan. Just like some people appearing in your life, they really are just passing by. The young man. The hotel's wireless network was very good, and the image was sent swiftly. However, it took a while, and Lin Mingxu didn't reply. After sending the message, Shi Yu put down his phone and continued to enjoy himself. The young man was annoyed and said, You don't know me, and you don't understand us. How can you speak randomly? I believe she still has me in her heart. Well. Shi Yu sincerely questioned him, How do you think her having you in her heart would manifest? The young man. He burst into tears and made a desolate sound, but. But I really like her. Love cannot be forced. This time, Shi Yu lifted the cucumber slice from his left eye and gave him a compassionate look. The main sources of pollen allergies are wind pollinated trees and grass. The young man. The truth of the world instantly shattered a young man, and his sadness was deeper and wider than the swimming pool. He couldn't fall asleep for his nap anymore. Shi Yu picked up his phone and noticed that Lin Mingxu still hadn't replied. He thought for a moment and sent another message. Shu Yu, can't sleep because I miss you love you Tilda. Great, after his careful and rigorous calculation, it seemed to increase the genuine feeling by ten. He got up, put on his slippers, and was about to go back to his room to sleep when a middle-aged man came in by the poolside. After looking around, he walked quickly towards Shu Yu. Oh, Duan Sichi, why are you still here? The production team has been asking. When he reached Shu Yu, he recognized him, and his expression changed instantly. Who are you? Ai Xiao Qi doesn't like private fans. Shu Yu hurriedly explained, You misunderstood. I'm just a passing good Samaritan. Duan Qi responded with a sorrowful sound, Wu Wu Wu. The manager was taken aback and asked, Xiao Qi, what's wrong with you? What happened? Is it because of this person? Wu Wu Wu, it has nothing to do with him. Duan Sichi choked out. Duan Sichi's words hit him hard, and he continued, It turns out Sissy really doesn't like me. Oh no. The manager exclaimed, 
quickly covering his mouth. How can you say such things in front of others? If it gets out, you'll be all over the hot search. To answer she expressed deep sadness, saying, I know, but I can't help it, woo woo woo. Meanwhile, Xiu had already walked away but suddenly remembered something and turned around to ask, Wait, you're a celebrity? The kind that can trend? The manager responded cautiously, What do you want to do? My Xiao Qi hasn't done anything wrong. Understanding the situation, Xiu blushed and said, I suddenly remembered that I'm his fan. Can I have an autograph? The manager was surprised, as he had never seen a fan who couldn't recognize a celebrity. Nevertheless, in order to calm the situation, he carried a signed photo of Dun Sichi and gave it to Xu Yu. Happily, Xu Yu sent a message to Lin Mingxu. Not for collection or resale, just thought of it as a rare opportunity and casually asked for one. For Xu Yu, he still doesn't consider himself a celebrity and has always treated celebrities the same. Perhaps Lin Mingxu was busy, as he didn't reply. Xu Yu returned to his hotel room and soon the program staff came knocking on his door, asking him to come down for a meeting. He quickly changed his clothes and hurried downstairs, where he caught sight of the young man from earlier. Xiu was taken aback, but then realized that it was possible for several entertainment industry people to stay at the same hotel on the same day. Although he was careless, he wasn't too careless. Duan Sichi still seemed a bit down, but there didn't seem to be any major issues, and his manager was always by his side, acting like a guardian. Being cautious, Xiu discreetly stepped back. Just then, a staff member of the program called out, Everyone, let's go to the conference room for a briefing on tomorrow's shoot. He turned to his assistant and asked, Is everyone here? The assistant replied, They're all here, and then went through the list, Duan Sichi. Su Ming Ming. Xu Yu? Hey, which one is Xu Yu? Xu Yu reluctantly raised his hand and said, It's me. Oh. Hello, hello, the assistant greeted enthusiastically. Is Mr. Xu here alone? At that moment, Duan Sichi's manager suddenly looked over and stared at Xu Yu's back, making him feel a bit hot. Xu Yu remained composed and said, My manager will be here tomorrow. The intense gaze from behind only grew hotter, as if doubling in intensity. Once the assistant confirmed his identity, she let him off the hook. Xu Yu followed the group into the conference room and found a corner to sit in. He nodded absent-mindedly during the meeting, while on the other side, Lin Mingxu finally looked up from the pile of documents, rubbing his temples. He asked Tangler, who was beside him. Anything else for today? For today. Tangler quickly glanced at the schedule and answered concisely, nothing. Jiang Zong called and postponed the meeting to tomorrow. In other words, Lin Mingxu could finally leave on time today. However, when he looked at the seemingly never-ending stack of documents on his desk, Lin Mingxu furrowed his brows slightly and said, You can go home first. All right, CEO Lin, Tangla responded. He hesitated to say something but ultimately decided against it and left. Lin Mingxu was about to continue working when he caught sight of the illuminated screen of his phone on the table. He thought to himself, take a short break for now. Lin Mingxu picked up his phone and then saw the message from Xu Yu. The first one was a selfie, with a strange filter. The second one was just a routine message, so it could be ignored. But let's take a look. The third one was another photo, but it wasn't of Xu Yu, it was of an unfamiliar man. Xu Yu thought this person was good looking? Lin Ming Xu raised an eyebrow and replied. Five minutes passed, and Xu Yu didn't reply. Ten minutes passed, and Xu Yu didn't reply. Half an hour ticked away. Lin Ming Xu's gaze shifted from the computer screen to the phone screen for the umpteenth time, and finally, the phone screen flickered. Lin Ming Xu picked up the phone and took a glance. Calmly, he put down the phone and turned the screen face down. Then, Without diverting his gaze, he once again focused on the work documents. What a trashy message. From tomorrow, he'll switch to using a different carrier. Chapter 45 It's getting dark, and Xu followed the production team to have dinner. They didn't leave the hotel and went to the hotel's restaurant, where a large private room was arranged. The group of people entered one after another, and Xu quickly grabbed an abalone. Then he was stopped by Dun Sichi's manager. Um. The manager's expression became more polite. Mr. Xu, 
regarding what you heard by the pool this afternoon. Shiyu had a serious look on his face. Excuse me, do I know you? Manager? He was a bit confused. Didn't we just meet this afternoon? You were by the pool. Shiyu said seriously, you've mistaken me for someone else. That wasn't me, it was my half-brother, a fraternal twin. Manager. He seemed to understand something and tentatively asked, and your twin brother? Shiyu nodded. He's already gone. Manager, wow, no evidence to prove otherwise. He couldn't help but look subtly, but the next moment, Shiyu blinked and whispered, Don't worry, he's a deaf mute. And he only has a three-second memory. Even less than a goldfish. Although it's said that goldfish have more than seven seconds. The manager instantly understood, and his expression became much more natural. He laughed and extended his hand. Oh, Mr. Shu, you're such a good person. By the way, I do and Sachi is about the same age as you. You can be friends. Shu coughed, sure, sure. After all, I'm his fan. Manager, he wonders if Shu Yu's manager can come quickly. After resolving this little incident, Shu floated to the table. The production team invited several guests this time, along with the staff, totaling dozens of people. Shu picked a few dishes that looked delicious and found seafood here. He immediately served himself some and sat down by the wall next to the sofa. As soon as he sat down, Du and Sachi floated over like a ghost, his body stiff, and his tone elusive. Do you think I still have a chance? What? Shu bit the lotus root box and looked up. Who are you talking about? Me. Duan Sachi, experiencing his first heartbreak, felt like his world was collapsing. He answered in a frustrated tone, me and Sissy. He couldn't find anyone else to confide in, his friends weren't here, and his manager would only advise him to let it go. After searching, Shu was the only half-informed person available. Shu suspiciously paused for a moment, blinked, and said, I think it's still possible. Because theoretically, there was a non-zero chance for him to be in a relationship with his childhood idol. It's just extremely small. However, when Du and Sachi heard this, it was like encountering a kindred spirit in a vast world. He immediately felt somewhat uplifted. Are you serious? I'm serious. She said sincerely, believe me, Chinese people don't deceive Chinese people. Unexpectedly, Du and Sachi was startled, I'm a Chinese overseas. Is it okay if I don't have a household registration? Shiyu hesitated for a second, well, the verification should mainly depend on bloodline. Duan Sachi wished he could immediately go home and look at the family genealogy. Once there was hope, he started fantasizing again, Sissy is really cute. I really like her. Um hum. Shiyu was busy eating grilled squid skewers, devouring each tentacle. I've known her for many years, and both sets of parents are acquainted. We can be considered childhood sweethearts. Um hum. Shiyu put a few skewers of lamb and quail eggs on the plate, a mix of land and sea. I've confessed to her many times, but she always rejects me. Could it be that she really dislikes me that much? Um hum. Finally feeling satisfied, Shiyu cleared his mouth and said to Duan Sachi, it doesn't necessarily mean she dislikes you. People don't only have to like or dislike someone. But, Duan Sachi despondently said, if she doesn't dislike me, why won't she give me a chance? Well, it's like this. Shu finally picked up a tissue and wiped his mouth, speaking seriously, because girls have the right to reject anyone, no matter who they are. Duan Sachi was stunned, then murmured after a while, you make a valid point. He suddenly stood up, as if he had made a decision, and said, I'm going to find her, one last time, and make things clear. Shiyu was also taken aback, now? I can't wait. Duan Sachi said he would leave immediately, without any hesitation. Shiyu anxiously glanced at his manager not far away, trying to persuade him, why not wait until the program is finished shooting? It's okay. Duan Sachi said, as long as I can make it back tomorrow. If it really doesn't work. My family is a sponsor of this program. I can have them add my scenes later and pay double overtime. Shu Yu. He began to wonder why rich people couldn't include him as an extra. Oh, by the way. I'll talk to Brother Luo myself, Duan Sachi remained loyal, 
You can pretend we never had this conversation today, and I won't mention you to Brother Luo either. Brother Luo is Duan Sichi's manager. Before Xu Yu could stop him, he shivered and quickly intercepted him. Wait. Duan Sichi stared at him intently. I really can't wait. Even if you can't wait, you have to wait. Why? Xu Yu blinked desperately, hinting at him. Because you can't go. I can. Duan Sichi stubbornly persisted. I just checked. The last flight hasn't taken off yet. That's not it. Xu Yu could only point behind him and said, Brother Luo is right behind you. Duan Sichi. Brother Luo immediately dragged him back to the room, saying that he would sleep on the sofa tonight, and anyone who tried to leave would have their legs broken. Xu Yu couldn't help but think, fortunately, Wu Yush isn't like this. After eating and drinking his fill, he returned to his own room. Because he ate too much, Xu Yu lay on the bed and soon felt drowsy. As he closed his eyes in a daze, a thought floated through his mind. What did he forget? Ah, he really forgot something. Just then, his phone buzzed, and with his eyes closed, Xu Yu fumbled to answer. Hello? Wu Yuxi's voice came through. Xu Yu, how was your day? It was pretty good. Xu Yu mumbled, half asleep. I didn't do much today, just had a meeting and a meal. The filming starts tomorrow. That's good, that's good. Wu Yush was just showing concern over the phone. You didn't say anything during the meeting, right? No. Xu Yu proudly said, I nodded and approved everything they said without saying a word. Wu Yush felt that something was off. What did you approve? Well. Xu Yu tried hard to recall, but only fragments remained in his mind. I called for world peace? Wu Yush. He knew it. After hanging up that call, Xu Yu quickly dialed another number. Buzz. The phone rang for a while before connecting. Xu Yu excitedly said, Lin Ming Xu, are you asleep? Lin Ming Xu was still in the office, and it was only nine o'clock in the evening. The building was already empty, with only the security guards on duty. On Lin Ming Xu's floor, only his office was lit. It was quiet around him, very quiet. The man paused for a moment and casually asked, Not yet. Oh, oh. She knew he had been busy lately, so he didn't say much. He chuckled and said, I'm about to sleep, can you say good night to me? Lin Ming Xu raised an eyebrow. Sleeping so early? Yeah. She you couldn't help but yawn. I ate too much for dinner. Lin Ming Xu. For some reason, he wasn't surprised. As Xu Yu waited for the enchantment to take effect, he noticed that Lin Ming Xu suddenly fell silent on the other end. He immediately felt a little guilty. Um, should I go for a run? Lin Ming Xu furrowed his brow. Why would you run around in an unfamiliar place? It's not far. Xu Yu didn't hesitate. There's a street full of barbecue just 800 meters away from the hotel. Lin Ming Xu. He took a deep breath and casually asked, You sent me a photo. Who is that? It's a celebrity I met. Xu Yu hadn't seen Lin Ming Xu's message yet, but he remembered what he had sent. He explained, His name is Duan Sichi, he's quite interesting. He couldn't help but giggle as he recounted the process of meeting Duan Sichi. As he spoke, he became less sleepy, and his eyes lit up. I really didn't expect to be on a variety show with him. His manager, Brother Luo, had such a sour expression. Xu Yu was skilled at storytelling, and his narrative was like a stand-up comedy routine. After finishing, he couldn't help but feel excited. It was so much fun, I think filming tomorrow will be great too. After listening, Lin Ming Xu tapped his fingers on the desk, and suddenly asked, Which hotel are you in at Binhai City? Ujing Hotel, room 8018 it's about 3 kilometers from the beach, and the production team said we'll go to the seaside. It's been so long since I've been to the beach. Let me tell you, the winter sea is different from the summer sea. Xu Yu nodded in agreement, as in his previous life he was from a coastal city and had a special fondness for the sea, as well as a love for seafood. Lin Ming Xu made a sound of agreement, with several thoughts passing through his mind. At the same time, his gaze fell on an invitation letter on his desk. The back of the invitation letter had an address in Binhai City. It invited him to attend a business conference in Binhai City, happening in the next few days. Previously, he thought the business conference was of relatively low importance, 
and he could choose to attend or not. But now. He neatly put away the invitation letter and looked at the neon lights outside the window. In the silent office, Lin Mingxia listened to the gradually fading voice on the phone, turning into quiet breathing, and whispered softly. Good night. The next morning, Xu Yu was awakened by a knocking sound on the door. Xu Yu. Open the door, Xu Yu. If you don't hurry, the production team's car will leave. Xu Yu? He groggily got up and struggled to open the door. Outside, Wu Yuxi's greasy middle-aged face squeezed in, shaking him desperately. Xu Yu. Wake up. It's already past nine. Nine o'clock. Xu Yu instantly woke up. Is it really nine o'clock? When he woke up in the morning, he looked at the time and it was only six, right? Oh no, he must have time traveled again. Wu Yush had already squeezed in and looked around anxiously. Where are your clothes? Hurry up and change. A few minutes later, Xu Yu hadn't even combed his hair when Wu Yush dragged him onto the production team's SUV. As soon as he entered, he instantly met a pair of dark circles under someone's eyes. He was stunned for a moment before he recognized the person as Duan Sichi. Duan Sichi looked absent-minded and didn't even have the strength to speak when he saw Xu Yu coming in. Xu Yu couldn't help but ask, what happened to you yesterday? Duan Sichi, feeling hopeless, weakly said, I didn't sleep all night. Xu Yu couldn't help but look at the seats in front and behind him and asked in a low voice, and Luo Ge. Duan Sichi's expression became even more frustrated. He didn't sleep all night either. Xu was confused. Then isn't it even? What do you mean even? Duan Sichi hoarsely said, he can make up for sleep during the day, can I? Thinking that this program was sponsored by his own company, he felt even more miserable. It meant he was paying, suffering, and not even getting any benefits. He leaned weakly against the seat, and suddenly thought of something, grasping at a straw of hope. He said to Xu Yu, can you help me? How? I want to escape from this annoying daily life, I want to break free from this miserable existence. Duan Sichi passionately declared, I want to courageously pursue freedom and love. Chu Yu's gaze wandered, and he once again pointed behind him. Luo Ge is still behind you. Duan Sichi. This was unbearable. The car drove for over an hour and arrived at the shooting location, which was indeed by the seaside. Xu Yu felt ecstatic when he saw the sea, but today the wind at the beach was particularly strong, almost freezing his face. According to the production team's request, he ran on the beach for a while but soon couldn't bear it. As soon as the director called for a break, Xu Yu quickly jumped into the car and exchanged glances with Wu Yush. Wu Yush felt that he wasn't a qualified manager. How about I buy you a hot water bottle? Xu Yu regained a glimmer of hope in life and asked, Do you have hand warmers? Let me check. How many do you want? Xu Yu thought for a moment. Let's start with a hundred? Wu Yush, I'll go buy them. Lunch was also eaten by the seaside, and the only consolation was that the nearby restaurants were delicious. After finishing the meal, the production team said it was the perfect time for a solo interview. Xu Yu sat in front of the camera with his messy hair, half of his body still frozen, looking like an 80-year-old lady standing by Lake Baikal. His face was pale, and the staff members couldn't bear to see it. Mr. Xu, would you like to take a break? No need. Xu Yu straightened his back and said firmly, I'll rest after the recording. He was a dedicated person. So the staff members quickly began, Um, Xu Yu, how did you come to participate in this program? Xu Yu's messy hair swayed, and he honestly said, Because you guys paid, and other programs didn't invite me. Then what are your thoughts on this program? I have some. Xu Yu's expression was leisurely, with a hint of reminiscence. The big mahi-mahi fish at the hotel was delicious. The solo interview ended very quickly. Faster than the other guests. The following day followed a similar routine. In the evening, the director announced that the shoot went smoothly, and they could go to the next location, Luohai City, ahead of schedule. In the afternoon of the second day, Lin Mingxu and his assistant Tangla walked out of Binhai City Airport. As a qualified delete assistant, Tangla had already arranged the hotel and transportation. He was about to make a call when he casually heard Lin Mingxu ask, Which hotel did you book? According to your instructions, it's the Seaside Lijing Hotel, 
a business standard room, forced directed. The company had standards for business travel accommodation, and Lin Mingxu was the one who strictly followed them. He made a sound of acknowledgement, and then said casually, Xu should also be shooting around here. Tang Le didn't know and was surprised. Mr. Xu is also here? Without hesitation, he suggested, should I give Mr. Xu a call? No need. Lin Mingxu strode onto the car with his long legs and looked out the window. I'll go find him directly. A thought floated in Tang Li's mind, CEO Lin is quite skilled. The two quickly arrived at the hotel. Lin Mingxu asked Tang Le to take care of the luggage and went into the elevator, heading to the eighth floor. Room 8018 was easy to find, just around the corner. Lin Mingxu stood outside the door, suddenly hesitating. How should he say it? How should he say it? So that Xu would think it's just a coincidence? Or should he come here in the evening to create a simple encounter? At that moment, the hotel cleaner's cart was parked next to him, and a staff member swiped the card, opened the door, and hung the cleaning in progress sign in one smooth motion. The door opened, and there was no one inside. Lin Mingxu? Chapter 46 Just at that moment, Lin Mingxu's phone received a daily pop-up notification from Xu Yu. Xu Yu, on the third day of the business trip, I miss you, miss you, miss you, lots of love tilde. Lin Mingxu. The cleaning aunt entered the room with a cloth in her hand and saw Lin Mingxu standing at the door without moving. She kindly asked, young man, did you lose something or are you looking for someone? Lin Mingxu, I'm looking for someone. Oh, looking for someone. The aunt warmly reminded him, the person has already checked out. Next time, come earlier. Lin Mingxu, I made a mistake. He forgot to ask for Xu Yu's specific itinerary. With a stern face, he returned to his room. As soon as he entered, he found Tang Le standing against the wall like a gecko, with his upper body and hands pressed tightly against it, motionless. Lin Mingxu frowned, what are you doing? Seeing his superior enter, Tang Le immediately straightened up, his face turning red. Eh sorry, manager Lin. It seems like there's some noise next door, and the sound insulation is not good. Taking a deep breath, Lin Mingxu asked, what kind of noise? I I don't know. Tang Le felt embarrassed and at a loss, quickly explaining, I heard a pattern of three long and one short knocks from next door. It sounded like a distress signal, so I. Three long and one short? Lin Mingxu listened attentively and indeed heard a similar noise. It seemed like. Thud, 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 thud. At first listen, it was quite distinct. But as Lin Mingxu recalled the first aid knowledge he had learned, he knew it wasn't a distress signal. Tang Le let out a relieved breath and said, Manager Lin, should we report this to the front desk? No need. Lin Mingxu glanced at the daylight outside. It's still daytime, and the front desk can't do much about it. Indeed, it was still bright outside, and the noise wasn't considered disruptive during the day. Tang Le quickly found an excuse and left. Lin Mingxu sat alone in the room and opened his laptop. He came here to work, not specifically to meet Xu Yu. That's right, whether Xu Yu was here or not wasn't the main point. But, just as he focused his attention, the strange noise from next door resurfaced. Thud, thud, thud. Lin Mingxu furrowed his brow, stood up, and the sound suddenly stopped. He had no choice but to sit back down. Thud, thud, thud. His facial muscles twitched, and he stood up again. The sound stopped once more. Lin Mengxu. For some reason, he had a sense of familiarity with this headache. This time, the next door remained quiet for a while, allowing Lin Mengxu to resume reading the documents. But after half an hour, the noise started again. Thud, thud, thud. Thud, thud, thud. Thud, 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 thud. It even had a rhythm to it. Unable to bear it any longer, Lin Mingxu happened to be next to the wall. He raised his hand and knocked twice. The noise from the other side ceased. Lin Mingxu, I hope they understand my message. As he flipped to the next page of the document, Lin Mingxu suddenly noticed an error. Just as he was about to correct it, the noise from next door started again. 
thud, 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 thud. They even changed the pattern. Lin Mingxu furrowed his brow deeply, got up, opened the door, and walked to the door of the neighboring room, knocking on it. Instantly, the noise from the other side quieted down. Hopefully, this time should be enough of a hint. Lin Mingxu turned around and returned to his room. Just as he sat down, his phone rang. It was a call from Xu Yu. Instinctively, he glanced at the outside sky. It was indeed dark, but it was only a little past 8 p.m. since he wasn't very hungry. He had asked Tang Le to have his meal, while he himself had been busy until now. Was Xu Yu going to bed so early today? Lin Mingxu pressed the answer button, maintaining a calm tone. It's me, what's the matter? Lin Mingxu. Xu Yu's voice on the other end lacked the usual liveliness and instead carried a hint of seriousness. Are you still working overtime? Having worked late the night before last and last night, it was reasonable to assume he would be working overtime tonight as well. The night before last, I worked overtime. I also worked overtime last night. By the same reasoning, I must be working overtime tonight as well. Xu Yu felt smart and clever and secretly praised himself. Lin Mingxu nodded in agreement. Based on the actual situation, he was indeed working overtime. Xu Yu nervously asked, Are you free? I am. Lin Mingxu furrowed his brows slightly, sensing that today's Xu Yu was different. It seemed like something had happened. On the phone, Xu Yu held the phone tightly in his hand, huddled under the covers, and whispered, Lin Mingxu, I suspect there are ghosts in the hotel. Ghosts? Lin Mingxu was a firm materialist and atheist. He raised an eyebrow and asked, Why do you say that? Either there are suspicious individuals, like in the movies, such as spies or assassins preparing for something. Xu Yu tightened the blanket around him and said mysteriously, I was listening to a song just fine, but there were constant knocking sounds from the wall. Lin Mingxu's eyebrows twitched, and his tone unconsciously became subtle. Knocking sounds? I don't know what's going on. Xu Yu was puzzled. At first, I thought someone was next door, but there is clearly no one living next to me. I tested it a few times, and the person on the other side responded to me. This must be a ghost. Lin Mingxu suddenly had a bad premonition. He composed himself and asked cautiously, Where are you? Xu Yu confidently replied, I'm in the hotel. Lin Mingxu's mouth twitched, and he asked again, I mean, which city are you in? Oh. Xu Yu didn't think much and answered, Wasn't I here to shoot in Binhai City? I spent two days shooting and two days enjoying the cool breeze. I caught a bit of a cold. Coincidentally, the production team doesn't need me for today's scenes, so I decided to take a day off. They all went to Luoi City. Wu Yush was also in Binhai City, but he and Xu Yu couldn't stay in the same hotel. They were on different streets. Lin Mingxu's temple throbbed. So you're in your own room? Not anymore. Xu Yu cleared his throat and said with a hint of pride, Duan Cixi's room is a large suite, twice the size of my standard room, and the bathtub is high-end. I switched to his room. Lin Mingxu understood. It was hard to say whether he felt more delighted or upset by the emotions surging in his heart now. With a blank expression, he asked, Are you staying in room 1618? Xu Yu was shocked, how did you know? Is your room at the corner of the hallway? Xu Yu was astounded, Lin Mingxu, you actually? No. Lin Mingxu walked out of the room with the phone, turned a corner, and arrived at the opposite corridor. He took a deep breath and calmly said, open the door now. But what if something happens when I open the door and I get assassinated? Xu Yu cautiously yet firmly said. Lin Mingxu took another deep breath. At this moment, he really wanted to assassinate him. He was already standing outside the room, and Xu Yu was most likely hiding under the covers. Don't ask him how he guessed it. Helpless, he had to speak, I'm outside the door. Open the door. What? Xu Yu was stunned, why are you at the door? Did you teleport here? I came over for a meeting. But how did you end up in this hotel? Tang Le booked it. Inside the room. Chaos erupted, followed by a series of banging sounds. After a while, Xu Yu cautiously walked to the door and looked outside through the peephole. Lin Mengxu. Xu Yu was both shocked and delighted. 
Come in quickly and help me check. Lin Ming Xu stiffened for a moment, suddenly unsure whether he should reveal that he was in the neighboring room. After careful consideration, he decided, the man entered the room, looked around, and calmly said, it should be the sound from outside the window. Xu immediately pressed himself against the window and looked outside, saying, no, there's nothing. Lin Ming Xu replied, it might have been a bird. A bird? It flew away now. Really? Xu widened his eyes and stared at him intently, saying, Lin Ming Xu, you know a lot. Lin Ming Xu lowered his gaze and calmly sent a message to Tang Le. Lin Ming Xu, please change my room immediately. Oh wait, something's not right. Xu snapped back to reality and finally noticed the bug, asking, how did you know? Lin Ming Xu suddenly averted his gaze and casually said, you knocked first. Ah. Uh. Speaking of that, Xu Yu's attention was diverted, and he guiltily said, I was wearing headphones and playing games, I didn't notice and kicked the wall a few times. It seemed like he was playing the game intensely. And with a rhythm. Upon receiving a message, Tangla came over to find out why Lin Ming Xu wanted to change rooms, but the door was open. He heard some commotion nearby and found his way to the corridor. Hey, Mr. Lin. He looked in the direction and saw Xu Yu, instantly surprised, Mr. Xu. You guys. Lin Ming Xu remained expressionless and said, If you leave now, I'll triple your travel expenses. Tangler. His brain hadn't fully processed the situation yet, but he caught the word triple. In the next second, Tangler turned around and walked away, muttering to himself, I suddenly remembered I have to call my girlfriend. Xu Yu. He looked suspiciously at Lin Ming Xu, Lin Ming Xu, you. Lin Ming Xu froze, Xu Yu, I. You. Suddenly, Xu Yu burst into laughter, with a smile in his eyes, you're really good, boyfriend. Lin Ming Xu was taken aback, why do you say that? I'm feeling sick with a cold today. Xu Yu reasoned, regardless of the reason, it's great that you showed up at this time. He immediately put on a smiling face. Have you had dinner yet? No. Even better. Xu Yu smiled mischievously, I haven't eaten either. Hurry, 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 we must have missed a lot of excitement at the barbecue stall downstairs. Lin Ming Xu. A strange feeling surged in his chest, but before Lin Ming Xu could fully grasp it, Xu Yu had already climbed up using both hands and feet, put on his coat, and came over to pull Lin Ming Xu. But he didn't budge. Hey. Xu Yu turned to look at him, aren't you going to eat? Lin Ming Xu hesitated for a moment and said with difficulty, I remembered that I was given two hotel meal vouchers at the business meeting. Knowing the outcome of saying it out loud, he still said it. Xu Yu's eyes immediately lit up, let's go, let's go, let's go. What are they waiting for? Two minutes later, two more people were present in the hotel's third floor banquet hall. In this kind of situation, with some unspoken agreement, Lin Mingxu and Xu Yu quickly went their separate ways, heading in different directions. Lin Mingxu went to attend to business matters, while Xu Yu accurately found the table with seafood and before long, his plate was full. Perhaps due to the cold, Xu Yu didn't have a big appetite and only ate half of his usual portion. After finishing, he put his plate in the designated area and decided to find Lin Mingxu. Lin Mingxu seemed busy. Xu Yu saw him from a distance, talking to several people. The man's side profile was as handsome as a painting, his well-fitted suit making him the absolute center of attention. With elegant gestures, he held a glass of champagne, exuding grace with every move. Xu Yu couldn't help but admit that Lin Mingxu was the most attractive person in the world. He admitted that he was a fan of handsome men. When he first read this novel, it was also because of the handsome guy on the cover that he clicked on it. In order not to disturb Lin Mingxu, Xu Yu stopped a few steps away and studied the toothpick box on the hotel table. Wait a minute, from the visible part, this isn't a toothpick box, it's a vinegar bottle. Why would a vinegar bottle be here? Xu Yu's gaze shifted as he looked for a hotel staff member, but couldn't find one. Just then, the two people who were talking to Lin Mingxu finished their conversation and walked toward the table. Standing next to the table, they talked to each other while grabbing food. Xu Yu hadn't turned around yet when he heard a familiar name. I didn't expect it, the young master Lin from the Lin family has also seen such days. 
Tisk, that's right, I almost didn't recognize him just now. When rich people fall, they're no different from ordinary people in my opinion. Hey, he wouldn't have looked at this kind of place in the past. By the way, what do you think of his project? Not good, ha ha ha. He has nothing now, who would want to discuss a project with him? I just recognized him and wanted to show you something interesting. If it were before, there wouldn't be such fun. The two spoke with an air of superiority, freely criticizing the man, their words filled with arrogance. Then one of them suddenly exclaimed, Huh, and said to Sha Ayu, Are you a waiter? Shiyu blinked, I can be. The person. They looked Sha Ayu up and down, not entirely sure but not entirely uncertain either. Then they seemed indifferent, looking down on him from above and said, So you say you are, then pour me a glass of wine. Okay. Shiyu nodded eagerly, turned his back, opened the vinegar bottle, and poured it directly into an empty glass. He even shook it a bit, this is a new sauce flavored wine, sir, please give it a try. The person continued talking and didn't pay much attention. He picked up the glass and drank it all in one go. Oops. Lin Mingxiu was not far away, just putting down the champagne glass in his hand, when he saw Xu Yu rushing over like an untied husky, grabbing his hand and turning to run. Lin Mingxiu, run. They're coming to kill me from the next room. Lin Mingxiu, Chapter 47 Next Door Lin Mingxiu hadn't reacted yet when two people rushed over from a short distance away. For some reason, they had a strange smell about them. An unusually sour smell. The person on the left had a large wet patch on their chest, while the one on the right was covered in sticky brown liquid from head to toe. Ling Mingxiu? You. The two individuals didn't care about anything else and ran after Xu Yu, shouting, Stop right there. Xu Yu didn't pull Ling Mingxiu along and had already darted three meters away. He turned his head and made a face, saying, You want me to stop when you say so? Have you paid me? I. Both individuals were furious and spoke incoherently. Suddenly, they noticed Ling Mingxu standing right beside them and became suspicious. Are you? Are you in cahoots with them? No. Xu Yu shouted loudly, I don't know this person. If you're looking for someone, look for me. He showed loyalty and said, I am Jiang Yu Wanshan from Songjiang. Go and inquire about me, understood? Ling Mingxu? He seemed to understand something, his eyebrows furrowing slightly. He intentionally or unintentionally positioned himself in front of Xu Yu and asked, What's going on? Ling Mingxu, move aside. These two individuals were currently angry and didn't care about Jiang Yuan Shan or Wang Lu Xiui. The person on the left was agitated and said, Ling Mingxu, you used to be the young master of the Lin family, and we still gave you some face. But now, what are you? Ling Mingxu's eyes suddenly darkened. At this moment, Xu Yu popped up from Ling Mingxu's shoulder, making a face and said, That's right, you two are the ones who are nothing. This year, we don't accept gifts during the holidays, and even if we did, we wouldn't accept anything from you two. He looked at them with pity in his eyes, clicking his tongue, After all, just by looking at your appearances, one can tell that you're not very bright. I won't force you. You. The other party was furious, Ling Mingxu, move aside. Ling Mingxu furrowed his brow, and the word slipped out of his mouth, I won't move aside. He looked deeply at the two individuals, his gaze dark, but his tone calmer than before, if you want to deal with this matter, you can directly come to me. Come to you? Who is he to you? Can you take responsibility? Yes. Ling Mingxu paused for a moment and calmly said, He is under my care, so of course. I will take responsibility. Under my care. Suddenly, Xu Yu blushed, and he quietly poked Ling Mingxu's back with his finger, whispering in his ear, You can pretend not to know me. I can handle it. But it was clear that the two individuals in front had already concluded that they were in cahoots. Ling Mingxu, you. Ling Mingxu coldly stared at them. The deep and profound gaze of the man sent a chilling and oppressive feeling. The two individuals suddenly felt a tremor in their hearts and realized that the man in front of them was not someone to be trifled with. But the Lin family had fallen, so where did Ling Mingxu get such confidence? Where did he get this kind of momentum? How about? They tried to provoke him verbally first. At this time, a crowd had gathered around, and the hotel staff, 
belatedly realizing the situation, hurriedly arrived. Presumably, the person in charge of the banquet hall, wearing a uniform with a badge on his chest, wanted to figure out what was going on. However, unfortunately, no one paid any attention to him. Restaurant manager, um, gentleman. Ling Ming Xu, move aside. Hand over that kid. Huff, you're looking for Ling Ming Xu? Didn't I already say it? I, Jiang Yuanshan from Junjiang, have taken care of it all. Hey hey hey, aren't you from Songjiang? Do you think we're fools? And Ling Ming Xu, if you don't move aside, we won't be polite to you either. Ah, since you can't even tell the difference between Junjiang and Songjiang, what's the connection anyway? And you're not allowed to involve innocent bystanders. If you have the ability, come at me. The restaurant manager pressed the intercom button, angrily shouting, Security! Get in here! Several security guards quickly rushed in and swiftly grabbed the two angry individuals, since Ling Ming Xu remained composed throughout, and Xu Yu was protected behind him, the security guards didn't do anything to them. This made the two individuals even angrier and with the reddish-purple vinegar still dripping from their faces, they resembled oversized eggplants. Everyone avoided them like the plague. Xu suddenly spoke, Big Brother Security Guard, you've worked hard. Indeed. The Big Brother Security Guard scratched his head foolishly, being covered in such a strong sour smell, my wife will nag me when I go back. The restaurant manager, you, get out. The Big Brother Security Guard grinned. Xu Yu cleared his throat, about to say something when he saw Ling Ming Xu take a step forward and say something to the restaurant manager. The manager's expression changed slightly, and his attitude suddenly became polite. All right, Mr. Lin, I understand. He no longer paid attention to this side and walked up to the two individuals, please escorting them out. The person in charge of the business conference also rushed over. Ten minutes later, Ling Ming Xu and Xu Yu entered the elevator. The doors closed, and they began to ascend. Ling Ming Xu didn't say anything. Xu Yu, who was just cheerful a moment ago, now felt guilty. He hesitated and said, Ling Ming Xu. Ling Ming Xu said lightly, Do you want to say something? I confess. Xu Yu raised his right hand solemnly and said, I lied just now. Ling Ming Xu raised an eyebrow. Why? Xu Yu blushed and lowered his head. They are not in the room next to mine. Lin Ming Xu remained silent. Oh, if only he had been the one in the room next to theirs, maybe he would have believed it. He raised his hand and rubbed his slightly throbbing temple in helplessness. Tell me, what caused the conflict between you and the two of them? Well, um. Xu Yu stammered, unable to speak for a long time. Lin Ming Xu frowned slightly, and Xu Yu caught a glimpse of it. Suddenly, a flash of inspiration struck him, and he took the initiative. First, tell me what you said and why did that manager let the two of us off the hook? Lin Ming Xu's tone was casual. We are guests, so of course he would let us off. They arrived at the 16th floor, and the elevator door opened. Lin Ming Xu stepped out, followed by Xu Yu, who was still curious. What about the business meeting? How was it resolved? I know their superiors, Lin Ming Xu said casually. Besides, it's not a big deal. Just a little incident. Xu Yu showed respect, his eyes shining brightly as he clapped like a seal. Boyfriend, you're amazing. You're awesome. Boyfriend, how can you be so amazing? How can you be so great? Lin Ming Xu remained expressionless. So, what's your explanation? Um. Xu Yu stumbled again, hesitating, and then looked around. It's such a trivial matter, I don't want to bother you with it. He didn't want to say it, nor did he want Lin Ming Xu to know that he was being mocked and ridiculed behind his back. He chuckled awkwardly, Oh, I still have a cold and feel a bit dizzy. I'll go back and rest. But just as Xu Yu took a step forward with his left foot, Lin Ming Xu stopped him. The man's forehead throbbed. Will you tell me or not? I won't. Xu Yu raised his head proudly, with a look of unyielding determination. I won't say it even if you kill me. For some reason, Lin Ming Xu remembered a drunken episode involving Xu Yu. And he remembered what happened after they got drunk. The man's eyes flickered, but before he could say anything, Xu Yu suddenly remembered something and casually asked, Oh? Lin Ming Xu, which room are you staying in? Lin Ming Xu, uh-oh. 
The atmosphere suddenly took a sharp turn, becoming very delicate. The corner of the corridor was just within reach, but the man's footsteps unconsciously slowed down. He stiffly took out his phone, and there was a message notification from Assistant Tang on the screen. Tangler, CEO Lin, do you still need to change the room? Lin Mingxu, he really needs it. But in the next moment, another message came from Tangler. Tangler, CEO Lin, the front desk said that there are no rooms, look. No middle dot rooms middle dot left. Xu Yu suddenly approached, and Lin Mingxu, with a poker face, put away his phone and said, Lin Mingxu, are you busy tonight when you go back? The man remained composed and asked, not really, why? Well, Xu Yu hesitated for a moment. It's nothing, I was just asking. He felt that Lin Mingxu had been working too hard lately, either working overtime or working, day in and day out. But that's how it is during the startup phase, it's normal, and Xu Yu couldn't say anything about it. Xu Yu fell silent and had already reached the door of the room. But Lin Mingxu didn't leave, and Xu Yu couldn't help but turn his head to look at him. As he swiped the card to open the door, the man suddenly spoke without changing his expression, Since you're not feeling well, I'll stay and accompany you. Xu Yu? Did he ask Lin Mingxu to stay? Xu Yu blinked his eyes in confusion for a second. Lin Mingxu had already pushed open the door, leaving him with an open door. Something feels strange. Lin Mingxu walked into the room and sent a few messages to Tangla before putting away his phone. Indeed, the suite where Du and Sichi stayed was quite large, probably because it happened to be at the corner, with an area twice as big as the adjacent rooms, and for some reason, it was still considered a business standard room without an extra charge. So the program team didn't object to Xiu changing rooms, especially since Du and Sichi himself was very willing. Xu Yu followed him into the room and couldn't help asking, Aren't you still busy with work? Mm. Lin Mingxu said, I can go back a little later. It would be best to wait until Xu Yu fell asleep. Xu Yu felt confused. But. Lin Mingxu turned around and interrupted him, Didn't you say you missed me during your business trip? Yes, yes. Xu Yu panicked inwardly and quickly put on a sweet smile, Oh, boyfriend, I really miss you. Lin Mingxu's mouth twitched. Are you full from meeting? I'm full, I'm full. Xu Yu quickly put aside Lin Mingxu's abnormal behavior and focused on playing the role of an obedient boyfriend. Boyfriend, how about ordering some more food? Lin Mingxu hadn't eaten much, and those two people came over, followed by Xu Yu. At this moment, he was indeed a little hungry. But. Seeing his expression, Lin Mingxu lightly asked, didn't you say you were full? Well. Um. Xu Yu blushed. Probably because he had been jumping around just now, he actually thought he could eat more. Actually, the young man opened his big eyes and fluttered his long eyelashes, his voice full of emotion as he said, When I was very young, I had a fantasy, no, a dream. Lin Mingxu didn't comment. Like what? Like eating all the delicious food in the world. Lin Mingxu remained unfazed. So? Like being with my beloved boyfriend. He covered his chest and said leisurely, doing romantic things with someone you like won't get boring even after a hundred years. Lin Mingxu fell silent. Damn it, that sentence sounds quite appealing. The young man continued to gaze at him eagerly, his eyes shining with a unique light. For some reason, Xu Yu insisted on dragging him along to have more food. Lin Mingxu averted his gaze and said, just be careful. Okay. Xu Yu cheered and went to order takeout on his phone. Lin Mingxu sat on the sofa, and his phone screen flickered, displaying a message notification. The man picked up the phone, opened it, and glanced at it. In an instant, his eyes deepened. It was a reply from Tangla. Just now, Lin Mingxu had instructed Tangla to find out what was going on with Xu Yu and those two people at the hotel. Tangla quickly provided detailed information including videos and text messages, leaving nothing out about what Xu Yu and the other two said to each other. Suddenly, he understood why Xu Yu refused to reveal the cause of the conflict. A drop of water fell into the tranquil lake of his heart, causing ripples that lingered for a long time. Lin Mingxu's eyes drooped slightly. After a while, Xu Yu finished ordering takeout and walked over eagerly, asking, Boyfriend, is there anything you want to eat? Subconsciously, 
The man flipped his wrist, tilting the screen downward, but he didn't catch what Xu said. Without waiting for a response, Xu quickly asked again, Lin Ming Xu? It seems like hot and soupy dishes are suitable for winter. I want to have hot pot, but it seems like this spicy specialty shop is about to close, and only clear soup broth is left. What do you think? Lin Ming Xu preferred milder flavors, and spicy food was not his first choice. He casually asked in return, why don't you choose another place? She responded, you're right. For convenience, Xu decided to sit on the sofa next to Lin Ming Xu. The sofa was soft, and the two of them naturally sank into it. Lin Ming Xu's back tensed slightly as he noticed that Xu Yu's hair had grown longer, softly resting against the back of his neck, creating a stark contrast between the black and white strands. He turned his head, and the slightly longer strands of hair almost brushed against Lin Ming Xu's cheek. Xu Yu asked, What about this place? Lin Ming Xu suddenly stood up and said, You can decide, I just remembered that I have an online meeting. He hurriedly left, leaving Xu Yu surprised. However, without thinking much about it, Xu Yu considered Lin Ming Xu's taste and placed the order for takeout. The food arrived quickly, and Xu Yu was about to call someone. But then he thought that Lin Ming Xu was busy, so he should deliver it himself to be a better boyfriend. So the excellent boyfriend, Xu Yu, dialed Lin Ming Xu's phone number and happily asked, Lin Ming Xu, which room are you staying in? The food is here, and I'll come over to eat with you. Lin Ming Xu, I made a mistake. But it's okay. Lin Ming Xu immediately responded, I'll come over to find you. Huh? I'm already outside. Xu Yu stood in the corridor patting his pockets and suddenly exclaimed, Oh no, I think I forgot to bring the room key. Lin Ming Xu. He composed himself, tightened his grip on the phone, and calmly said, Xu Yu, there's something I need to tell you right now. What is it? While Xu Yu was searching his pockets, he really couldn't find the room key. He looked around and even checked the floor. Lin Ming Xu took a deep breath and said, I'm not in the room. Xu Yu asked curiously, then where are you? I'm. Lin Ming Xu paused, and suddenly, as if possessed, he said, I'm dealing with an assassination attempt next door. Xu Yu? Chapter 48. Dot. DM in it. The moment the words were spoken, Lin Ming Xu's face turned pale. Why did he have to act like Xu Yu and go crazy like him? On the other end of the phone, Xu Yu was also shocked. Lin Ming Xu, you. He struggled to find the right words feeling like his brain couldn't process it. Is this phone call real? Is it Lin Meng Xu? Is it really you? Yes. Xu was stunned, but the call abruptly ended. Shortly after, Lin Meng Xu walked up to him and gritted his teeth. Come with me. What? His expression twisted, leaving Xu dumbfounded. He was too scared to move, and Lin Meng Xu decisively took hold of him and pulled him into the room. Once inside, Xu Yu suddenly snapped back to reality. What are you? Yes. Lin Ming Xu gritted his teeth. I'm staying in this room. So, that voice earlier. It was me. Lin Ming Xu emphasized each word. At that time, I didn't know it was you next door. Then why did you? Lin Ming Xu took a deep breath but didn't answer immediately. He himself couldn't understand why he came to this city, why he stayed in the same hotel, why he pretended it was a coincidence. This feeling was too unfamiliar. Even in his reincarnated state, everything felt new and like a first-time experience for him. Meanwhile, Xu Yu's mind became a mess, trying to process the situation. After a moment, he finally reacted and couldn't help but blurt out, So, there's no haunting next door? Lin Ming Xu's temples throbbed. No. And there's no undercover agent? Lin Ming Xu sighed. No. Then. Xu Yu suddenly realized. Lin Ming Xu, you lie to me. What about the bird outside the window? What about it flying away? Ah, why is the truth like this? He had a cold at that time, and his head was a bit dizzy. He didn't think much about it. After all, who could have expected that, with Lin Ming Xu's thick eyebrows and big eyes? Huh? This phrase sounds familiar, did I say it somewhere before? Xu Yu was so angry that his hair stood on end and he vigorously shook himself. I'm getting angry. Lin Meng Xu. 
Xu turned around in place, realizing that he couldn't do anything to Lin Ming Xu. This made him even angrier, muttering to himself, You actually fooled me. He actually believed it. Even more furious. Like a little puppy biting its own tail in place, he almost howled in anger. Lin Ming Xu stiffened, pondered for a moment, and couldn't help but say, It's my fault. But in that moment of madness, one lie needed a thousand more lies to make up for it. And this wasn't the first time. The incident with the cup before. Lin Ming Xu's breath itched, it was all because of Xu Yu. Not because of Xu Yu, but because of Xu Yu. It sounded convoluted, but now Lin Ming Xu's emotions were even more complex. Like intertwining vines climbing layer by layer, entangled together, like an unsolvable knot. However, now was clearly not the time to contemplate. Lin Ming Xu cleared his throat. Shall we order takeout? You said you haven't eaten enough, right? I haven't. Xu Yu didn't let go of the takeout in his hand. Upon hearing this, he turned around and coldly said, I'll eat by myself. Lin Meng Xu. Xu Yu walked back to his room in big strides, stood at the door, and Lin Ming Xu caught up. Come to my room and eat. The young man forcefully turned his head to the right. I won't. Lin Ming Xu twitched the corner of his mouth, helpless, and reminded him, Have you found your room key? Xu Yu immediately turned his neck back. Not yet. Ah, why is it like this? Lin Ming Xu cleared his throat and took the initiative. You eat first, I'll go help you get a room key. Xu Yu grumbled, but you're not the person, how can you get a room key? Lin Ming Xu, indeed. He could only watch as Xu Yu disappeared in a hurry. Xu Yu entered the elevator, still sulking, thinking about what to do. How embarrassing. It's all because he trusted Lin Ming Xu's character too much, never thinking in any other direction. No, if this continues, won't he be played around by Lin Ming Xu in circles? Thinking of Lin Ming Xu's abilities and retaliatory methods from the original book, Xu Yu warned himself, Xu Yu, oh Xu Yu, have you forgotten the miserable fate of the original host? Have you forgotten the miserable fate of the antagonist? Have you forgotten the miserable fate of the antagonist's son? Lin Ming Xu is the one who laughs last in the whole book, the big capitalist. Absolutely cannot be fooled by him again. So, Lin Ming Xu waited in the room for a while until he received a message from Xu Yu. Xu Yu, hmm, he pondered over the whole sentence and thought it was fine before sending it. It was neither excessive nor too cold, showing his indifference while politely declining Lin Ming Xu. Very well, plus, he even said good night. After sending it, Xu Yu secretly gave himself another thumbs up. Lin Ming Xu. The wind tonight is quite loud. Lin Ming Xu could feel a slight pain in his temples. He walked up to Xu Yu's room door, wanting to say something but hesitated. In the end, he raised his hand and knocked. Xu Yu. Xu Yu heard it, and he contemplated whether to open the door. Xu Yu. He heard it again, and he was still contemplating whether to open the door. Unable to bear it any longer, Lin Ming Xu knocked on the door for the second time, saying, Xu Yu. You took away the takeout, how am I supposed to eat? Xu Yu. He was so absent-minded, he hadn't noticed. Awkwardly, he opened the door and reached out to hand over the takeout, but unexpectedly, Lin Ming Xu abruptly leaned against the door. With a little force, he opened it directly and walked in. Xu Yu didn't expect him to do that and was stunned for a moment. Lin Ming Xu? The man walked in, closed the door, and stood in front of Xu Yu. It was already late in the evening, and the surroundings were quiet. The man stood face to face with him, furrowing his brow and looking at him. For some reason, Xu Yu felt a bit guilty. What was he feeling guilty about? But the way Lin Ming Xu's presence felt, it was as if he was coming to question him. Clearly, it wasn't his fault. Xu Yu swallowed nervously his hair standing on end, and stammered, well, I'm still angry. We were arguing. Lin Ming Xu raised an eyebrow, what's the reason for your anger? Um. Xu Yu said awkwardly, because you deceived me? And I actually believed it? I apologize. Lin Ming Xu cut to the chase, very straightforwardly saying, it was my mistake, please forgive me. At the same time, I promise there won't be a next time. 
He apologized so neatly and in such a standard way that Xiu was dumbfounded for a moment, is that it? If you're still angry, Lin Mingxi paused and said seriously, don't stay angry for too long. I remember you said that you won't punish yourself for other people's mistakes. That's true, but... The man's deep and profound eyes were fixed on Xu Yu, as if he was only focused on him, reflecting his small image. Xu Yu opened his mouth, but suddenly couldn't say anything. Before Xu Yu could speak, Lin Mingxu continued, I came here for another reason. Xu Yu, what? The matter from when we were eating, the man's eyes darkened, I already know about it. Xu Yu blushed, fortunately, he had his back to the light, so it wasn't noticeable even if someone looked closely. However, his fair and tender ears turned pink. Lin Mingxu's voice unintentionally softened as he said in a low voice, Xu Yu, thank you. No, it's nothing. Xu Yu felt like he was about to hiccup, his voice becoming airy, those two people are quite bad. I despise those kinds of people who act one way to your face and another way behind your back. He was afraid that Lin Mingxu would misunderstand, so he hurriedly explained, don't take what they said seriously. Those two fellows are no different from trash. Lin Mingxu, what's the difference? Xu Yu lifted his chin, decisively stating, they're alive. Lin Mingxu, yeah, that's very Xu Yu. After this conversation, Xu Yu's attention had already shifted, and he wasn't so angry anymore. He stood still in a daze for a while, watching as Lin Mingxu took the takeout from his hand and walked in, opening and arranging everything on the coffee table. The food had already cooled down, but it didn't affect its edibility. Lin Mingxu acted as if nothing had happened and said, Do you want to eat together? Xu Yu felt like he should refuse, but... Xu Yu took small steps and moved closer, telling himself, There's still a little bit of anger left. He should remember this feeling. Lin Mingxu had already taken apart the chopsticks, calmly asking, Did you order the spicy one? Yeah. Xu Yu hesitated for a moment and said, the reviews said their spicy dishes are the best. Unexpectedly, in the next second, Lin Mingxu picked up a piece of crispy meat with his chopsticks and calmly handed it over, then why don't you give it a try? Um. Xu Yu's eyes were fixed on that piece of crispy meat with its fragrant and tender interior and crispy exterior. The delicious aroma kept wafting into his nose. Maybe he should take a bite. He could get angry again after finishing the food, there was still time for that. So Xu Yu took a bite. He couldn't resist picking up his chopsticks. And took another bite. And another. The food box was empty. Satisfied, he slumped on the sofa. Lin Mingxu took the takeout away and didn't forget to softly say, Good night. Good night, boyfriend. Xu Yu felt drowsy and dizzy. Something seemed off. Ah, so sleepy, don't want to think about it. He fell asleep. The next morning, Xu Yu woke up unusually early. Maybe it was because he ate too much the night before, he wasn't really hungry in the morning. He took a stroll along the street outside the hotel, and when he came back, it was just a little past six. On his phone, Duan Sichi had sent him a bunch of messages, each one a 60-second voice message, almost like the length of a song. Confirmed, it was an emotional issue. Xu Yu had no intention of opening them, so he called Wu Yush who was staying in a hotel on the adjacent street. Brother Wu, wake up. Let's go, come pick me up quickly. Wu Yush, with sleepy eyes, glanced at the time. 6.30 in the morning? Yeah. Xu Yu said matter-of-factly, we'll go early for the shoot. Don't want to delay the progress of the production team, right? Wu Yush, that's true, but why does it feel so strange coming from Xu Yu? Unable to hold back, he asked. Are you feeling better from your cold? I'm all better. Xu Yu was full of energy. I feel like a superhero now. Wu Yush, youth is truly a wonderful thing. Xu Yu was in high spirits, and he should feel happy. Wu Yush rubbed his face, quickly got dressed, packed his things, and checked out. A few minutes later, he walked into Xu Yu's room with a bottle of soy milk in hand. Have you had breakfast? I already ate. Xu Yu proudly shook his head. I even ran two kilometers. Two kilometers. Wu Yush was amazed. You actually went for a morning run? Yes. Xu Yu proudly said, I ran two kilometers before I found the Kaifeng Dishes store. Wu Yush was curious, 
Do you want to eat kaifen dishes today? No. Shiyu explained, because today is Freaky Thursday. Wu Yush, huh? Not only did Shiyu call him early in the morning, but he had also already packed his luggage. Wu Yush was concerned and tried to feel his forehead, realizing that he was indeed fine. They walked out together. Just as they reached the corridor, they came face to face with a familiar face. Tangla looked surprised at the travel bags in their hands. Mr. Shu, you. Shu Yu's hair stood up in an instant, oh no, would it work if he knocked Tang Lan unconscious now? He stuttered and stumbled, Assistant Tang, what you saw wasn't me. My name is Yu Shu. Nice to meet you. Tang Le. Just at that moment, the door next to them opened, and Lin Ming Shu walked out. He looked at the situation and twitched his mouth, then looked at Shu Yu. Are you leaving now? Yes, yes, yes. She nervously replied, the production team is waiting for me alone. It would be impolite if I didn't go early. Lin Ming Xu fell silent. She turned his head anxiously, not looking at him, and said, Oh, I booked the high-speed train tickets two nights ago. I didn't tell you yesterday morning because I didn't want to disturb your sleep. And I left you a message. Lin Ming Xu furrowed his brow slightly, I didn't receive it. How is that possible? Xiu was shocked and skipped over to check the gap under the door. I clearly put it in. Lin Ming Xu's temple throbbed. Why don't you try carrier pigeons next time? But then I would have to buy pigeons, right? Xiu argued confidently, why buy them if I only need them once? Lin Ming Xu, the urge to assassinate arose within him again. He couldn't help but glance at the time, it was not even seven in the morning. Lin Mingxu also noticed that Xiu still had a slight grudge in his heart. Without revealing anything, the man simply said, his voice low and pleasant like a gentle breeze on a summer night, Xiu, there are many things I don't know. Do you want to know them? Xiu looked up in surprise, blinking his eyes. How do you know everything? Lin Mingxu pondered for a moment, then sighed softly. Xiu. The man with deep, dark eyes stared at Xiu. There was a perplexing yet gentle emotion flowing silently between them. His voice was low and melodious, like a gentle summer breeze. I have many things I don't know either. Would you like to know them? Chapter 49 It's snowing. Snowflakes are falling one by one, and a few of them land on Lin Mingxu's hair, quietly melting away, leaving behind sparkling droplets. Xiu unconsciously looks at the slightly damp hair and opens his mouth in surprise, huh? What is Lin Mingxu saying? Tongue twisters? Or riddles? How can he tell himself things that he doesn't know? Xiu can't help but giggle, boyfriend, you're so strange. There are things I know that you don't know. You don't know that I know, and I know that you know that you don't know, but I don't know if you want to know. Lin Mingxu. The romantic atmosphere vanishes, and Lin Mingxu takes a deep breath, coldly saying, Goodbye, no need to see you off. Xu Yu? After getting on the high speed train, Xu Yu still couldn't figure out what was going on. He could only attribute it to Lin Ming Xu's inscrutable thoughts. Wu Yush is still in a state of confusion, Xu Yu, when did your boyfriend come over? Xu Yu's hair droops on his head as he casually says, Yesterday, I don't know when he arrived. We only met last night. Is he here on a business trip? Wu Yush also notices Tang assistant and guesses. That's quite a coincidence. Yeah. Chi Yu casually converses with him when a flash of insight suddenly crosses his mind. Wait, could it be that Lin Mingxu is behaving this way because? He quickly sends a message to Lin Mingxu on the fourth day of the business trip. Miss you, miss you, miss you, Tilda. Wu Yuzh, sitting beside him, unexpectedly glimpses at the screen and immediately says, "Didn't you two just separate?" Yeah. Chi Yu shyly says. One day apart feels like three autumns, five minutes apart feels like a tea time. Wu Yuzh, is there a difference? He opens his mouth, feeling his teeth sour, but suddenly remembers his own situation and can't help but feel sad, forget it, as a person on the verge of a broken family, how can I compare to a couple in love? So during the journey of more than ten minutes, Wu Yuzh remains melancholic, gazing at the scenery flying by outside the window fully showcasing the unique charm of a melancholic middle-aged man. Before long, someone calls out to him, Excuse me, can you? 
Wu Yuxi's eyes light up, talk about life. No. The other person looks at him strangely, can you put your leg away? I need to pass. Wu Yush. He decides to make an appointment for psychological counseling when he returns. The high-speed train swiftly arrives, and the production crew sends a car to pick them up. The two of them follow and arrive at the shooting location, which turns out to be a farmhouse. As Xu Yu walks in, Duan Sichi turns his head with a lack of energy and leaps up when he sees him, Xu Yu, Xu Yu, Xu Yu. Xu Yu, wait. Did I fly here? Duan Sichi looks bewildered. Do you have a private plane too? Ah, uh, never mind that. You're here, and I just remembered some details I didn't tell you last night. Shuyu recalls the dozens of 60-second voice messages, and his face shows terror, I suddenly remembered that I have something to do. I have to leave. Duan Sichi is taken aback, do you have something to do? Well, remember to come later. Brother Luo just bought me a bunch of snacks, and I can't finish them alone. Xu Yu steps pause instantly, wait, I suddenly remembered that I've already finished that dusk. The two of them get into Duan Sichi's RV, and as soon as Xu Yu sits down, he tears open a bag of potato chips as big as his head, adjusts himself into a comfortable position, and starts munching on them. Duan Sichi says, Xu Yu, I wanted to tell you about Sissy. Xu Yu, crunch, crunch, crunch. Duan Sichi, Xu Yu. I wanted to talk to you about Sissy. Shu Yu, crunch, crunch, crunch. Duan Sichi's speech was dry, and with a slight pause, Shu Yu handed him a can of soda with a caring and considerate expression, saying, Are you thirsty? Drink up and continue speaking. These potato chips are so delicious, he hasn't had enough. Duan Sichi was deeply moved and said, Shu Yu, you're now my friend. If you need anything in the future, just find me, I've got your back. Aha, uh -huh, aha. Uh -huh. Shu Yu nodded absent mindedly, while thinking about whether Duan Sichi or Chu Ching would be a more reliable support. Duan Sichi had already finished talking about his decades long acquaintance and relationship with Sissy. He racked his brain but couldn't come up with any more details. Suddenly, he slapped his thigh and exclaimed, No, I still want to go find Sissy. I messaged her last night, and she said she's been at school recently. I'm not the same person I used to be. I can face her again. Don't. Shu Yu quickly advised him, wait until you finish the show. It's only two and a half more days, and then it'll be over. Duan Sichi vigorously shook his head, determination written all over his face. I have to go now to experience my urgent emotions and sincere feelings. Shu Yu's gaze wandered, avoiding eye contact. Seeing this, Duan Sichi immediately asked, Shu Yu, why can't you look at me? Don't you believe in me either? No, no. Shu Yu sincerely pointed out, because Luo is brother behind you again. Duan Sichi. Brother Luo smirked, his face displaying a smile that wasn't really a smile. Come down, the production team is calling for people. I'll leave you with this, he stared at Duan Sichi with a fierce gaze. If you dare to run away, I'll tell your big brother that you regret it and want to quit the entertainment industry. Duan Sichi. Immediately, he became as limp as a winter cabbage. The two got out of the car, one after the other, and the filming began as the production team greeted them. Duan Sichi was relatively reliable when it came to work, though it may have been due to Brother Luo monitoring him the whole time. After they finished shooting, he ran over to find Shu Yu but realized that there wasn't much to reminisce about. They could only stare at each other, at a loss for words. Shu Yu blinked his eyes and took the initiative to speak. Do you still have those snacks? Duan Sichi felt a sudden reprieve and said, Yes, I still have them. The two of them were eliminated in the mini-game segment just now, so now they mainly watched others filming. They squatted by the village, watching others carrying buckets of water while snacking on melon seeds and enjoying their snacks. At that moment, a little yellow dog from the village approached, looking longingly at the beef jerky in their hands, but the two of them paid no attention, engrossed in their own enjoyment. The program's cameraman's eyes lit up, and he specifically gave the two of them and the dog a few close-up shots. In this moment, the two of them tilted their heads, and the little yellow dog tilted its head, creating a strange unified rhythm. Hmm, it looked good on camera. Adding some voiceover and artistic text would probably make it a selling point. The rest of the filming went smoothly and finished half a day early.
On the afternoon of the sixth day, Xu Yu took the high-speed train back home, and Wu Yush received a phone call, surprising him, Xu Yu, we have another business collaboration. Xu Yu replied with a lack of energy, what? Why are you so unenthusiastic? Wu Yush wondered, isn't this how you like to make money? Well, that's true. After staying up until three in the morning playing games with Duan Sichi, Xu Yu reluctantly raised his hand and said, actually, I'm an artificial intelligence robot. I haven't been charged in a long time, and I've managed to hold on until now solely due to my extraordinary willpower and unwavering determination. Wu Yush, so can you still move now? Not well, Xu Yu suddenly convulsed, waving his hands like noodles, and said in panic, I can only hold on for another five minutes. Hurry, lend me your power bank. Wu Yush, wait, are you serious? It's true. Xu Yu stopped trembling for a second and took out his phone, look, my phone is almost out of battery too. Wu Yush. He suspected that Xu Yu just wanted to borrow his power bank. The car stopped, and the two of them got out of the exit. Wu Yush planned to take Xu Yu home first, but Xu Yu waved his hand and said, no need, I'm going to Lin Ming Xu's place. He casually hailed a taxi and headed straight for Lin Ming Xu's company. When he reached the reception desk, the receptionist recognized him and retrieved his temporary pass from a drawer. Xu Yu hung his staff card around his neck and walked in. No one stopped him along the way, and he went straight to the deepest part of the company. Boyfriend, I'm back early. The office was empty. Xu Yu paused for only a second and quickly rushed to the adjacent lounge, saying, Boyfriend, I'm coming in now. The lounge was also empty. DM in it. Xu Yu wiped his face, put down his bag, and flopped onto the couch in the lounge. Huff, huff, huff. He was so tired, he decided to take a nap first. In his haste, he hadn't even properly closed the door. Before long, Lin Mingxu returned. He didn't notice anyone entering the room, nor did he see the slightly open door of the lounge in the corner. He walked in with a stern face, followed by Tang Le. CEO Lin, the client wants to reconsider. Tang Le, the assistant, hesitated and suggested, should we try to revise the contract? No need. Lin Mingxu raised his hand and rubbed his throbbing temple. The contract is already our best offer. If they still don't agree, it's not because of the contract. All right, CEO Lin. Tang Le didn't understand. If the contract was already perfect, why couldn't they close the deal? But since Lin Mingxu said so, he, as an assistant, didn't say anything more. Lin Mingxu didn't say anything else and only gave a few instructions. Tang Le was about to leave when he suddenly remembered something and asked, CEO Lin, aren't you going home today? Do you want me to order dinner? Recently, Lin Mingxu had been extremely busy, so he naturally delegated tasks like ordering meals to his assistant. Tang Le knew that Xu Yu was still on a business trip, but he wasn't sure if Xu Yu had finished it yet, hence the question. Lin Mingxu paused, his gaze unconsciously falling on his phone. He said calmly, no need to go back. Just order dinner. Tang Le nodded and left. With everyone gone, the office became quiet. Lin Mingxu busied himself at his desk for a while, and soon it was time to go home. One by one, the subordinates clocked out and left. Tang Le brought takeout for dinner, confirmed tomorrow's schedule, and then hurriedly went on his date. The lights in the building gradually turned off, and Lin Mingxu sat at his desk with a faint expression. Just another day, no different from before. Work, work, and more work. Alone, until late at night. The dinner was packed in a disposable box, getting colder without being opened. Lin Mingxu remained focused on the computer screen, showing no signs of eating. It was at this moment that a sound came from the adjacent lounge. Squeak. Lin Mingxu? The fleeting sense of loneliness disappeared. He furrowed his brows slightly and paused, observing for a moment. There seemed to be someone talking inside, followed by another sound. Sniff. The sniffing sound seemed somewhat familiar. Lin Mingxu got up silently, moving as lightly as possible. He walked to the door of the lounge without making a sound. Although the door was slightly ajar, it wasn't wide enough to see inside. He hesitated for a moment, about to push the door, when suddenly, a woman's voice came from inside, Hey, I've always been curious, Xu Yu, what do you really like about Lin Mingxu? 
Was that Xu Yu in the lounge? When did he come in? Lin Mingxu was surprised, but his body froze as he listened to what came next. He heard Xu Yu sigh rarely and say, Actually, I don't like him. Lin Mingxu's gaze suddenly changed, and he heard Xu Yu continue, He has a strange and cold temper. He doesn't know how to comfort others and spends money recklessly. He even fooled me, making me feel like a fool. His heart sank bit by bit. The man's eyes also darkened, as if covered by dense and indispellable clouds. Some images from the past floated in his mind. Deception, betrayal, nightmares. All turning into a pair of puppy eyes on a rainy day. Bright, innocent, and pure, as if glowing. If even the puppy was fake. His mind couldn't process anything else, repeating the same sentence over and over. The next moment, he heard a deeply moved and solemn declaration from the lounge. But I love him deeply. Do you understand how deep my love is? Lin Mengxu. Xu Yu sincerely and emotionally said, I have a deep affection for him, deeply in love. I love him so much that I can't extricate myself. If anyone tries to take him away from me, I'll treat them as enemies. If loving him is my mistake, then I'm willing to keep making mistakes. If loving him is my sin, then I'm willing to be unforgivable. He kept babbling, looking shy, after all, he is my boyfriend, and he looks so good. I can rely on investing in him to have a comfortable life for the rest of my life. Lin Mengxu Chapter 50 Lin Mengxu took a while before regaining his composure. His emotions were complicated as he raised his hand and knocked on the door. Knock, knock, knock. There were not many people left in the entire building, and Xu Yu immediately heard it. He said to Chu Ching on the other end of the phone, I have to go. I have a boyfriend. I'll hang up. I haven't told my boyfriend that I miss him today. Chu Ching. Chu Yu hung up the phone and flew over like a bird returning to its nest. Boyfriend, are you done with work? Are you tired? I came back early today. Are you surprised? Lin Mingxu, surprised, not necessarily happy. He had a complicated expression. When did you come in? In the afternoon? I can't remember, Xu Yu recalled for a while. I didn't sleep well last night, and when I didn't see you here, I came in and slept. He didn't mind at all and just ate and drank as he pleased. He had a big heart. Lin Mingxu didn't know if this was a good or bad thing. After a moment of silence, Xu Yu touched his stomach and said cheerfully, What do you want to eat? I earned money, so we can order takeout today. It was too late to go home and cook. But Lin Mingxu said, Are you very hungry? Um. Xu Yu wasn't very hungry either and shook his head. It's already evening, I was just asking. Lin Mingxu didn't feel like eating now. He calmly asked, Were you on the phone with Chu Ching just now? Yes. Xu Yu chuckled, I was half asleep and answered without opening my eyes. She asked me to go out and play and asked if you wanted to come too. It's to go to the countryside and soak in hot springs. We'll go on Friday and come back Sunday night. Hot springs. Hot springs. His eyes sparkled, and he looked at Lin Mingxu with anticipation. Are you going? If Lin Mingxu didn't want to go, he felt like he could go alone. I can. Lin Mingxu glanced at him deeply. When did she say? This week? Um. Xu Yu didn't expect Lin Mingxu to agree so readily and curiously asked, Aren't you busy with work? Lin Mingxu casually replied, Work life balance, right? Xu Yu, yes, indeed. He immediately lowered his head and sent a message to Chu Ching. Lin Mingxu said he'll go, oh. Chu Ching replied with an okay expression, and the matter was settled. After sending the message, Xu Yu smiled and asked, Shall we have dinner then? No rush. Lin Mingxu remained unhurried. His gaze was always on Xu Yu's face, as if he was observing his subtle changes in expression. Xu Yu didn't understand what he meant, but he quickly blinked his eyes, obediently and well behaved, saying, Sure. If you say no rush, then no rush. He pledged his loyalty swiftly, looking up at Lin Mingxu and then lowering his gaze. Although it's already nine o'clock, I'm not in a hurry either. I want to have supper directly. Boyfriend, I love you so much. You will definitely accompany me for supper, right? Lin Mingxu, he actually wavered for a moment. No, he couldn't continue like this. 
Xu Yu. Lin Mingxia thought coldly that if he let Xu Yu continue to lead him around, he might as well change his last name to Xu. And he didn't want to die of sudden cardiac arrest before turning thirty. The man's fingers tightened slightly, unconsciously overlapping and rubbing each other. He calmly said, Do you really love me that much? Of course. Xu Yu didn't hesitate and said, In this world, I love you the most. He skillfully pinched his fingers and held his heart, making it seem like a reflex action. Love you, love you, love you. Lin Mengxu's mouth twitched. Is there no reason? It's not that there's no reason. Xu Yu thought for a moment and said seriously, After all, even parents love their children based on the fact that they are their own children. His tone was cheerful. Since I love you so much, it means I'm exceptionally good. Lin Mengxu remained silent. After a while, he asked coldly, So, are you saying that you love me because I'm very good? No, how could that be? Xu Yu quickly denied it and squeezed out a fawning smile. I love you so much because you are also exceptionally good. After all, he was the protagonist, and apart from that, he had many good qualities. He reasoned confidently, Since we are both so good, isn't it normal for us to be together? Lin Meng Xu Xu had nothing to do and casually tidied up the messy bed in the rest area. He hummed a song as he walked around, feeling content and at ease, like a real boyfriend. Occasionally, he would come to his partner's company and casually enter his extremely private resting space to help tidy things up. Like the most intimate family member. Lin Mingxi watched this scene, his eyes deep and profound. After Xu finished tidying up, he suddenly reached out and touched the mattress, saying to himself, it's a bit thin. The Lunar New Year was approaching, and it would only get colder. Even if he just took a nap at noon, wouldn't it be better to have a thicker mattress? Ling Mingxu's eyes flickered, you didn't like that mattress? It can still be put to good use if I like it. Xu Yu thoughtfully said, now we have heating at home and an electric blanket, so it won't be cold to sleep at night. In comparison, you actually need a mattress. He also considered a detail, the mattress costs over 30,000 yuan and it looks good too. It would be more suitable to put it in President Lin's office than the others. Before Ling Mingxu could reply, he decisively said, that's settled. In the future, you can buy another mattress for the house, and consider it my support for you. No need to thank me. Ling Mengxu. I don't really want to thank you. After tidying up the lounge, Xu Yu carried his luggage and walked outside, only to see the untouched takeaway bag on Ling Mengxu's desk. He was surprised, you ordered takeout? Wait, you didn't eat it? Ling Mengxu replied, I got too busy, and I'm not hungry now. So that's why. Xu Yu couldn't help but sigh, being a president is not easy. He naturally reached out his hand and said, If you're not going to eat it, I'll take it home. Ling Mengxu? Weren't they supposed to eat supper together? Just as he was about to protest, his stomach grumbled in protest. He watched as Xu Yu picked up his takeaway and walked to the office door, saying, You're busy, I'll leave now. Ling Mingxu urgently stopped him, wait. Ah? Xu Yu stopped in his tracks, looking confused, is there something else? Ling Mingxu hinted clearly, weren't you going to eat supper? After eating alone for so many days, he suddenly didn't want to eat takeout in his office anymore. Xu Yu shyly said, but you have your own takeout, right? After careful consideration, I think we should save money. Ling Mingxu's expression instantly became blank. I'm hungry now, so put the takeout down. Xu Yu, oh. He placed the takeout back on the desk, making a funny face, boyfriend, you're so stingy. Ling Meng Xu. Who was the one saving money and still thinking about other people's takeout? Well, I'll go home and cook for myself then. After muttering, Xu Yu waved goodbye, I'm leaving. Oh, right. There's something important. As Xu Yu reached the door, he suddenly turned back and returned to Ling Mingxu's side. Unconsciously, a string seemed to be lifted in Ling Mingxu's heart, swaying uncertainly at the tip of his tongue. He could only hear Xu Yu giggling, I almost forgot to say. The young man suddenly smiled brightly, his eyebrows and eyes shining. On the sixth day of my business trip, the first day back, I missed you. Ling Mingxu's heart trembled. 
Some struggles that had been repeated and unable to stand firm had collapsed with a crash. Time flew, and it was already the weekend. On Friday night, Ling Ming Xu left work on time and picked up Xu Yu. They went to the outskirts with Chu Ching, Peng Shangan, and a few other friends. The outskirts of their city were mountainous, and it used to be a hot spring resort. Chu Ching booked an entire large courtyard for them to have fun together. The group first indulged in eating and drinking, and then changed into yukatas. Xu Yu entered the changing room and emerged wearing a casually draped white yukata because it was warm indoors and the yukata was relatively thin. His disheveled hair was slightly messy, and as he took a few steps forward, a hand suddenly reached out and grabbed him. Xu Yu lifted his foot but didn't move, turning his head in confusion. Ling Ming Xu? Ling Ming Xu, wearing a dark grey yukata, furrowed his brows and asked, Don't you know how to wear a yukata? I do. Xu Yu thought to himself, I could dress myself since I was three years old, although I often wore my pants and shoes the wrong way, I still succeeded in putting them on. Even the teacher at kindergarten praised me for being the best. Ling Ming Xu curled his lips, about to raise his hand, but suddenly paused and pushed Xu Yu back into the changing room. Um, Ling Ming Xu? Xu Yu didn't understand what he was doing. From his perspective, he thought there was nothing wrong with his yukata. The man stood face to face with him, and then he reached out his hand toward the belt of Shu Yu's yukata. Shu Yu. He was startled and held himself as if he were a little chick leaving its mother hen's protection, his voice trembling, Boyfriend, W what are you doing? Ling Ming Xu expressionlessly said, Your belt isn't fastened. Oh. Shu Yu awkwardly let go, I thought I had it on properly. Ling Ming Xu didn't say anything. His nimble fingers untied the haphazard knot Shu Yu had made, and just as he was about to fasten it again, he stopped and instead tightened the collar. The pure white fabric was securely covered. And then he fastened the belt. Perhaps because Shu Yu had a slim waist, the belt wound around an extra circle on his side, leaving a small piece that was neither too long nor too short, weaving through the man's evenly jointed fingers, and tied at the back. While tying the knot, Ling Ming Xu couldn't help but get very close to Xu Yu, almost as if he could hear the pounding, pounding, pounding of his heartbeat. And from Xu Yu's perspective, when he lowered his head slightly, he could catch a glimpse of the man's solid chest. Xu Yu blushed. T thank you, boyfriend. With the belt fastened, he quickly rushed out of the changing room and ran away. Ling Ming Xu followed at a leisurely pace and happened to hear Chu Ching ask Xu Yu in confusion, Xu Yu, what's wrong with you? You're already feeling feverish even before soaking in the hot spring? Well. Xu Yu babbled, just the thought of being able to enjoy the great entertainment of hot spring bathing with my good friend, sister, and bestie, Chu Ching, couldn't help but make me feel excited. That's not true. Chu Ching couldn't stop laughing, I actually wanted to soak with you, but everything was already arranged, and you and Ling Ming Xu were in the same pool. Xu Yu? Sisters are more important than anything. Sister, you're my disaster. But it doesn't matter, they've been sleeping on the same bed with Ling Ming Xu for so long, and nothing has happened, right? He firmly believed that Ling Ming Xu wouldn't be interested in him. Even if their relationship had improved a bit now, they were at most ordinary friends. Then the hot spring was ready. As Xu entered, he bypassed the folding screen and raised his eyes. Amidst the steam, Ling Ming Xu's handsome face swept over him with a pair of sharp eyes, capturing a little white rabbit. Xu Yu. For some reason, he instinctively took a step back. Where else do you want to go? Ling Ming Xu's voice was faint, but it sounded like a taut string. I I I. Xu Yu stuttered, I forgot to bring slippers. Ling Ming Xu, there by the cabinet at the door. Xu Yu blushed and grabbed the slippers, circling back behind the folding screen. After a few steps, he suddenly remembered something, I forgot to bring drinks. They can deliver them here. Ling Ming Xu seemed to have caught his thoughts and said calmly, there's a service menu over there. Oh. Xu Yu didn't understand what was happening to him today, he had already slept in the same bed with Ling Ming Xu, but for some reason, he couldn't face Ling Ming Xu's naked body. They're both men, what's the big deal? He made up his mind and walked boldly in front of Ling Ming Xu. He was about to remove his yukata when... Crash. He ended up doing the splits. 
Shu Yu, DMN it. He winced in pain, looked at his feet, and realized that he had kicked off his slippers. Ling Ming Xu. Shu Yu pouted and complained, these slippers are not slip resistant. Ling Ming Xu's lips twitched repeatedly, which could be abbreviated as an old twitch. He was already in the hot spring, and Shu Yu didn't intend to ask for his help. He struggled to climb up on his own, but then he heard the sound of water splashing, followed by the man's wet arm hanging down. Hurry up! Ling Ming Xu emerged from the water. Isn't that? Xu Yu's ears turned slightly red. He held on to Ling Ming Xu's wrist, looking around but avoiding eye contact with him. Should I go change into a different pair of slippers? Ling Ming Xu glanced at him and fell silent. You took the wrong ones. Once Xu Yu steadied himself, the man opened the small cabinet behind the folding screen and took out a visibly different pair of slippers. These are the slip-resistant ones. Oh. Xu Yu awkwardly changed into the correct slippers, but it didn't make much difference now. His yukata had come undone when he fell, and his clothes were disheveled. Moreover, the hot spring was just ten centimeters away. Shu Yu, how can I act natural during my first time soaking in a hot spring with my boyfriend? Urgent, waiting online. Splash. Ling Ming Xu had already submerged himself in the water again. The misty water gave everything a blurred filter. Shu Yu looked at the hot spring and realized it was quite spacious, enough to accommodate three or four adult men comfortably. He gathered his courage, carefully crossed the ten centimeter distance, and moved to the edge of the pool. He stretched out one leg, then the other. Ling Ming Xu's voice remained calm. If you don't get in soon, it'll be morning. Shu Yu coyly replied, I feel cold. I need to adapt to this temperature. Ling Ming Xu, because of kidney deficiency? Xu Yu was surprised. Boyfriend, you're even answering medical questions now. Ling Ming Xu, he shouldn't have given him that bit of sunshine. A few seconds later, Xu Yu finally let go of his yukata and entered the water, wearing only his swimming trunks. As he immersed himself in the warm water, his whole being felt relaxed and free, as if he could soar. So comfortable. Xu Yu couldn't help but sigh with contentment, enjoying the moment of tranquility. After a while, he became restless. Ling Ming Xu, should we order some food? I also saw a local specialty here. If you're referring to the fruit wine, Ling Ming Xu looked at him meaningfully, I don't drink. Oh. Xu Yu felt disappointed and casually ordered a few snacks. The food arrived quickly, and Xu Yu ate them one by one, leaning against the pool after finishing. His fair skin gradually turned rosy, and sweat beads formed on his forehead. His damp hair brushed against his forehead, and he absent-mindedly wiped it away, along with the stray hairs, making them even messier. Ling Ming Xu glanced at him and suddenly felt the world was in chaos. Unable to bear it any longer, he approached slightly. Xu Yu heard the sound of water and opened his eyes. Ling Ming Xu? Don't move. Ling Ming Xu raised his hand, plucked a few petals from above Xu Yu's head, and put them in the water. One petal drifted away with the ripples. Xu Yu inexplicably spoke up, Ling Ming Xu, what's your favorite flower? Flower? After a slight thought, the man replied, I don't particularly have one, but if I had to choose, it would be tulips. Xu Yu nodded earnestly and said sincerely, I'm different from you. Ling Ming Xu raised an eyebrow. I like flowers that bring wealth. Ling Ming Xu slipped for a moment and almost pulled Xu Yu's hair. Boyfriend. Xu Yu exclaimed in anger, what if I go bald? It's okay. Ling Ming Xu remained expressionless and said, baldness doesn't affect your ability to do stand-up comedy. But it affects my appearance. Xu Yu angrily retorted, look at that middle-aged programmer in your company. He can't find a girlfriend because of his male pattern baldness. What if I go bald in the future? My female fans will be heartbroken. You have a lot of female fans? Yeah, Xu Yu cared a lot about those fangirls. They were much better than male fans. Male fans would criticize him, while female fans would shower him with praise. Who wouldn't love that? Speaking of this, Xu Yu's spirits lifted, and he praised himself. I have many fans on Weibo. After this variety show airs, I'll gain even more followers. Maybe the next time your company has a promotional event, they'll have to pay me for advertising. Oh? 
Ling Mingxu casually remarked, So, you're worried about your career? Of course. Xu Yu reasoned, You're still in the early stages of your startup, and I naturally have to consider our little family. But I don't want you to overwork yourself. Just focus on your own work. Don't worry about the household matters, I've got it covered. He spoke as if he were the man supporting him from behind out of love, without complaints or regrets, wholeheartedly devoted. However, the youth kept spouting nonsense, one after another. Ling Mingxu felt a slight pain in his temple. He decided to enjoy the hot spring. The man closed his eyes and rested, no longer engaging in conversation with Xu Yu. On the other side, Xu Yu indulged in his own enjoyment, eating and drinking. After a few more minutes of soaking, he suddenly had an idea. He took a deep breath, then abruptly sank underwater. The room fell silent. Three seconds. Five seconds. Seven. Ling Ming Xu suddenly opened his eyes, and in an instant, water splashed everywhere. Xu Yu emerged from the water in front of him, laughing and splashing water onto his face. Ling Ming Xu, why isn't your hair wet? Splash. The next moment, Xu Yu's world spun as he was forcefully pressed against the edge of the pool by the man. He saw the man's thick hair dripping with water, his eyebrows furrowing towards the center, and deep eyes staring at him without blinking. Instinctively, Xu Yu wanted to run, but the man's sturdy chest was pressed against him, and his back was against the pool's edge, leaving no room to escape. Ling, Ling Ming Xu? Xu Yu blinked his eyes, his voice growing weaker, cough, cough, it was just a joke. Mmm, just a joke. Ling Mingxu showed no intention of letting him go, calmly saying, I want to play a joke on you too. W what? Xu Yu stared blankly at him, completely confused. What kind of joke did Ling Mingxu want to play on him? The young man was soaked from head to toe, looking as fresh and tender as a little mermaid. His wet hair was now slicked back, and Ling Mingxu freed up one hand to tuck a wet strand of hair behind Xu Yu's forehead. His brows and eyes were handsome, delicate, and beautiful. But they were completely different from before. He had doubted and considered all sorts of possibilities, possible and impossible. But none of that mattered anymore. There's no love without reason, and coincidentally, he didn't believe in love without reason. If Ling Mingxu had something he wanted from him, then that was even better. It's best to always have something to seek. Ling Mingxu's eyes grew even deeper, reflecting Xu Yu's dumbfounded expression. Xu Yu's back was a little uncomfortable against the pool's edge, and when he spoke, his voice had a slight touch of coquetry. Boyfriend, can you get up first? My back is getting sore. However, the man still didn't release him. His expression was indifferent, but between his brows, it seemed as if the clouds had finally cleared, revealing a faint sense of clarity and ease. Since he couldn't control it, then he would establish it, encircle it, guard it, and then think about the future. Like a great dragon determined to protect its treasure, Ling Mingxu's expression gradually softened, surprising Xu Yu when he caught a glimpse of it. Ling Mingxu. Xu Yu blinked his eyes and suddenly blurted out, Why are you in such a good mood? Is there something fun happening? Ling Mingxu. A subtle change in his emotions disappeared once again. Xu Yu burst into laughter, his eyes shining brightly like stars. Quick, share it with me. We'll still be good friends. Ling Mingxu paused for a moment, then asked in a soft voice, Are we good friends? How could we not be? Xu Yu looked shocked, Are you trying to end our relationship? Ling Mingxu, then what exactly is our relationship? Um. Xu Yu hesitated for a moment, then blurted out inexplicably, An improper relationship between men? Ling Mingxu? 